Luke chapter 13, verses 10 through 21. On a Sabbath, Jesus was teaching in one of the synagogues, and a woman was there who had been crippled by a spirit for 18 years. She was bent over and could not straighten up at all. When Jesus saw her, he called her forward and said to her, Woman, you are set free from your infirmity. And then he put his hands on her, and immediately she straightened up and praised God. Indignant because Jesus had healed on the Sabbath, the synagogue leader said to the people, There are six days to work, so come and be healed on those days, not on the Sabbath. The Lord answered him, You hypocrites! Doesn't each of you on the Sabbath untie your ox or donkey from the stall and lead it out to give it water? Then should not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has kept bound for eighteen long years, be set free on the Sabbath day from what bound her? When he said this, all his opponents were humiliated, but the people were delighted with all the wonderful things he was doing. Then Jesus asked, What is the kingdom of God like? What shall I compare it to? It is like a mustard seed, which a man took and planted in his garden. It grew and became a tree, and the birds perched in its branches. Again he said, What shall I compare the kingdom of God to? It is like yeast that a woman took and mixed into about sixty pounds of flour until it had worked all through the dough. Luke chapter 15 Now the tax collectors and sinners were all gathering around to hear Jesus. But the Pharisees and the teachers of the law muttered, This man welcomes sinners and eats with them. Then Jesus told them this parable. Suppose one of you has a hundred sheep and loses one of them. Doesn't he leave the ninety-nine in the open country and go after the lost sheep until he finds it? And when he finds it, he joyfully puts it on his shoulders and goes home. Then he calls his friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me, I have found my lost sheep. I tell you that in the same way, there will be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine righteous persons who do not need to repent. Or suppose a woman has ten silver coins and loses one. Doesn't she light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it? And when she finds it, she calls her friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me. I have found my lost coin. In the same way, I tell you, there is rejoicing in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. Jesus continued, There was a man who had two sons. The younger one said to his father, Father, give me my share of the estate. So he divided his property between them. Not long after that, the younger son got together all he had, set off for a distant country, and there squandered his wealth in wild living. After he had spent everything, there was a severe famine in that whole country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to a citizen of that country who sent him to his fields to feed pigs. He longed to fill his stomach with the pods that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. When he came to his senses, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have food to spare, and here I am, starving to death. I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. So he got up and went to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. 
he ran to his son, threw his arms around him, and kissed him. The son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fattened calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So they began to celebrate. Meanwhile, the older son was in the field. When he came near the house, he heard music and dancing. So he called one of the servants and asked him what was going on. Your brother has come, he replied, and your father has killed the fattened calf because he has him back safe and sound. The older brother became angry and refused to go in. So his father went out and pleaded with him. But he answered his father, Look, all these years I've been slaving for you and never disobeyed your orders. Yet you never gave me even a young goat so I could celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours, who has squandered your property with prostitutes, comes home, you kill the fattened calf for him. My son, the father said, you are always with me, and everything I have is yours. But we had to celebrate and be glad, because this brother of yours was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. Luke chapter 17 verses 11 through 20 Now on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. As he was going into a village, ten men who had leprosy met him. They stood at a distance and called out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. When he saw them, he said, Go, show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. One of them, when he saw he was healed, came back, praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him, and he was a Samaritan. Jesus asked, Were not all ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? Has no one returned to give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, Rise and go. Your faith has made you well. Once on being asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God would come, Jesus replied, The coming of the kingdom of God is not something that can be observed, nor will people say, Here it is, or there it is because the kingdom of God is in your midst. Luke chapter 18 verses 35 through 43 As Jesus approached Jericho, a blind man was sitting by the roadside begging. When he heard the crowd going by, he asked what was happening. They told him, Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. He called out, Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on me. Those who led the way rebuked him and told him to be quiet, but he shouted all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stopped and ordered the man to be brought to him. When he came near, Jesus asked him, What do you want me to do for you? Lord, I want to see, he replied. Jesus said to him, Receive your sight. Your faith has healed you. Immediately, he received his sight and followed Jesus, praising God. When all the people saw it, they also praised God. Luke chapter 19, verses 1 through 10. Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through. A man was there by the name of Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was wealthy. He wanted to see who Jesus was, but because he was short, he could not see over the crowd. 
So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore fig tree to see him, since Jesus was coming that way. When Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. So he came down at once and welcomed him gladly. All the people saw this and began to mutter, He has gone to be the guest of a sinner. But Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, here and now I give half of my possessions to the poor, and if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because this man too is a son of Abraham, for the Son of Man came to seek and save the lost. John chapter 3, verses 1 through 19. Now there was a Pharisee, a man named Nicodemus, who was a member of the Jewish ruling council. He came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one could perform the signs you are doing if God were not with him. Jesus replied, Very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. Nicodemus asked, How can someone be born when they are old? Surely they cannot enter a second time into their mother's womb to be born. Jesus answered, Very truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water and the Spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the Spirit gives birth to Spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying, you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. How can this be? Nicodemus asked. You are Israel's teacher, said Jesus, and you do not understand these things? Very truly, I tell you, we speak of what we know, and we testify to what we have seen. But still, you people do not accept our testimony. I have spoken to you of earthly things, and you do not believe. How then will you believe if I speak of heavenly things? No one has ever gone into heaven except the one who came from heaven, the Son of Man. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes may have eternal life in him. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already, because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. This is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but people loved darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. John chapter 6 verses 1 through 59 Some time after this, Jesus crossed to the far shore of the Sea of Galilee, that is, the Sea of Tiberias, and a great crowd of people followed him because they saw the signs he had performed by healing the sick. Then Jesus went up on a mountainside and sat down with his disciples. The Jewish Passover festival was near. When Jesus looked up and saw a great crowd coming towards him, he said to Philip, Where shall we buy bread for these people to eat? He asked this question only to test him for he already had in mind what he was going to do. 
Philip answered him, It would take more than half a year's wages to buy enough bread for each one to have a bite. Then, another one of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, spoke up. Here is a boy with five small barley loaves and two small fish. But how far will they go among so many? Jesus said, Have the people sit down. There was plenty of grass in that place, and they sat down. About five thousand were there. Jesus then took the loaves, gave thanks, and distributed to those who were seated as much as they wanted. He did the same with the fish. When they had all had enough to eat, he said to his disciples, Gather the pieces that are left over. Let nothing be wasted. So they gathered them and filled twelve baskets with the pieces of the five barley loaves left over by those who had eaten. After the people saw the sign Jesus performed, they began to say, Surely this is the prophet who is to come into the world. Jesus, knowing that they intended to come and make him king by force, withdrew again to a mountain by himself. When evening came, his disciples went down to the lake, where they got into a boat and set off across the lake for Capernaum. By now it was dark, and Jesus had not yet joined them. A strong wind was blowing, and the waters grew rough. When they had rowed about three or four miles, they saw Jesus approaching the boat, walking on the water, and they were frightened. But he said to them, It is I, don't be afraid. Then they were willing to take him into the boat, and immediately the boat reached the shore where they were headed. The next day, the crowd that had stayed on the opposite shore of the lake realized that only one boat had been there, and that Jesus had not entered it with his disciples, but that they had gone away alone. Then some boats from Tiberias landed near the place where the people had eaten the bread after the Lord had given thanks. Once the crowd realized that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they got into the boats and went to Capernaum in search of Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the lake, they asked him, Rabbi, when did you get here? Jesus answered, Very truly, I tell you, you are looking for me, not because you saw the signs I performed, but because you ate the loaves and had your fill. Do not work for food that spoils, but for food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For on him God the Father has placed his seal of approval. Then they asked him, what must we do to do the works God requires? Jesus answered, The work of God is this, to believe in the one he has sent. So they asked him, What sign then will you give that we may see it and believe you? What will you do? Our ancestors ate manna in the wilderness, as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Jesus said to them, very truly, I tell you, it is not Moses who has given you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is the bread that comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Sir, they said, always give us this bread. Then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me, will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. But as I told you, you have seen me, and still you do not believe. All those the Father gives me will come to me, and whoever comes to me I will never drive away. For I have come down from heaven not to do my will, but to do the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me, 
that I shall lose none of all those he has given me, but raise them up at the last day. For my Father's will is that everyone who looks to the Son and believes in him shall have eternal life, and I will raise them up at the last day. At this, the Jews there began to grumble about him, because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They said, Is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How can he now say, I came down from heaven? Stop grumbling among yourselves, Jesus answered. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws them, and I will raise them up at the last day. It is written in the prophets, they will all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard the Father and learned from him comes to me. No one has seen the Father except the one who is from God. Only he has seen the Father. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, yet they died. But here is the bread that comes down from heaven, which anyone may eat and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. This bread is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. Then the Jews began to argue sharply among themselves. How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Jesus said to them, Very truly, I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise them up at the last day. For my flesh is real food, and my blood is real drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so the one who feeds on me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Your ancestors ate manna and died, but whoever feeds on this bread will live forever. He said this while teaching in the synagogue in Capernaum. Matthew chapter 5 through 7 One day, as he saw the crowds gathering, Jesus went up on the mountainside and sat down. His disciples gathered around him, and he began to teach them. God blesses those who are poor and realize their need for him, for the kingdom of heaven is theirs. God blesses those who mourn, for they will be comforted. God blesses those who are humble, for they will inherit the whole earth. God blesses those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. God blesses those who are merciful, for they will be shown mercy. God blesses those whose hearts are pure, for they will see God. God blesses those who work for peace, for they will be called the children of God. God blesses those who are persecuted for doing right, for the kingdom of heaven is theirs. God blesses you when people mock you and persecute you and lie about you and say all sorts of evil things against you because you are my followers. Be happy about it. Be very glad, for a great reward awaits you in heaven. And remember, the ancient prophets were persecuted in the same way. You are the salt of the earth, but what good is it if salt has lost its flavor? Can you make it salty again? It will be thrown out and trampled underfoot as worthless. 
You are the light of the world, like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. No one lights a lamp and then puts it under a blanket. Instead, a lamp is placed on a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your good deeds shine out for all to see, so that everyone will praise your Heavenly Father. Do not misunderstand why I have come. I did not come to abolish the law of Moses or the writings of the prophets. No, I came to accomplish their purpose. I tell you the truth. Until heaven and earth disappear, not even the smallest detail of God's law will disappear until its purpose is achieved. So if you ignore the least commandment and teach others to do the same, you will be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But anyone who obeys God's laws and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. But I warn you, unless your righteousness is better than the righteousness of the teachers of the religious law and the Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. You have heard that our ancestors were told, you must not murder. If you commit murder, you are subject to judgment. But I say, if you are even angry with someone, you are subject to judgment. If you call someone an idiot or a fool, you are in danger of being brought before the court. And if you curse someone, you are in danger of the fires of hell. So, if you are presenting a sacrifice at the altar in the temple, and you suddenly remember that someone has something against you, leave your sacrifice there at the altar. Go and be reconciled to that person. Then, come and offer your sacrifice to God. When you are on your way to court with your adversary, settle your differences quickly. Otherwise, your accuser may hand you over to the judge, who will hand you over to an officer, and you will be thrown into prison. And if that happens, you surely won't be free again until you have paid the last penny. You have heard the commandment that says you must not commit adultery. But I say, anyone who even looks at a woman with lust has already committed adultery with her in his heart. So if your eye, even your good eye, causes you to lust, gouge it out and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one part of your body than for your whole body to be thrown into hell. And if your hand, even your stronger hand, causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one part of your body than for your whole body to be thrown into hell. You have heard the law that says a man can divorce his wife by merely giving her a written notice of divorce. But I say that a man who divorces his wife, unless she has been unfaithful, he causes her to commit adultery. And anyone who marries a divorced woman also commits adultery. You have heard that our ancestors were told, you must not break your vows. You must carry out the vows you make to the Lord. But I say, do not make any vows. Do not say, by heaven, because heaven is God's throne. And do not say, by the earth, because the earth is his footstool. And do not say, by Jerusalem, for Jerusalem is the city of the great king. Do not even say, by my head, for you can't turn one hair white or black. Just say a simple, Yes, I will, or no, I won't. Anything beyond this is from the evil one. You have heard the law that says the punishment must match the injury. An eye for an eye, and a tooth for a tooth. 
But I say, do not resist an evil person. If someone slaps you on the right cheek, offer the other cheek also. If you are sued in court and your shirt is taken from you, give your coat too. If a soldier demands that you carry his gear for a mile, carry it two miles. Give to those who ask and don't turn away from those who want to borrow. You have heard the law that says, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say, love your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you. In that way, you will be acting as true children of your Father in heaven. For he gives his sunlight to both the evil and the good, and he sends rain on the just and the unjust alike. If you love only those who love you, what reward is there for that? Even corrupt tax collectors do that much. If you are kind only to your friends, how are you different from anyone else? Even pagans do that. But you are to be perfect, even as your Father in heaven is perfect. Watch out. Don't do your good deeds publicly to be admired by others, for you will lose the reward from your Father in heaven. When you give to someone in need, don't do as the hypocrites do, blowing trumpets in the synagogues and streets to call attention to their acts of charity. I tell you the truth, they have received all the reward they will ever get, but when you give to someone in need, don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. Give your gifts in private, and your Father, who sees everything, will reward you. When you pray, don't be like the hypocrites who love to pray publicly on street corners and in the synagogues where everyone can see them. I tell you the truth, that is all the reward they will ever get. But when you pray, go away by yourself, shut the door behind you, and pray to your Father in private. Then your Father, who sees everything, will reward you. When you pray, don't babble on and on, as the Gentiles do. They think their prayers are answered merely by repeating their words again and again. Don't be like them, for your Father knows exactly what you need even before you ask Him. Pray like this, Our Father in heaven, may your name be kept holy. May your kingdom come soon. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today the food we need and forgive us of our sins as we have forgiven those who sin against us. And don't let us yield to temptation, but rescue us from the evil one. If you forgive those who sin against you, your heavenly Father will forgive you. But if you refuse to forgive others, your Father will not forgive your sins. And when you fast, don't make it obvious, as the hypocrites do, for they try to look miserable and disheveled so people will admire them for their fasting. I tell you the truth, that is the only reward they will ever get. But when you fast, comb your hair and wash your face, then no one will notice that you are fasting except your Father, who knows what you do in private. And your Father, who sees everything, will reward you. Don't store up treasures here on earth, where moths eat them and rust destroys them, where thieves break in and steal. Store your treasures in heaven, where moths and rust cannot destroy, and thieves do not break in and steal. Wherever your treasure is, there the desires of your heart will also be. Your eye is like a lamp that provides light for your body. 
When your eye is healthy, your whole body is filled with light. But when your eye is unhealthy, your whole body is filled with darkness. And if the light you think you have is actually darkness, how deep that darkness is. No one can serve two masters, for you will hate one and love the other. You will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and be enslaved to money. That is why I tell you to not worry about everyday life, whether you have enough food and drink or enough clothes to wear. Isn't life more than food and your body more than clothing? Look at the birds. They don't plant or harvest or store food in barns, for your heavenly Father feeds them, and aren't you far more valuable to him than they are? Can all your worries add a single moment to your life? And why worry about your clothing? Look at the lilies of the field and how they grow. They don't work or make their clothing, yet Solomon in all his glory was not dressed as beautifully as they are. And if God cares so wonderfully for wildflowers that are here today and thrown into the fire tomorrow, he will certainly care for you. Why do you have so little faith? So don't worry about these things, saying, What will we eat? What will we drink? What will we wear? These things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers, but your heavenly Father already knows all your needs. Seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously, and he will give you everything you need. So don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring its own worries. Today's trouble is enough for today. Do not judge others, and you will not be judged, for you will be treated as you treat others. The standard you use in judging is the standard by which you will be judged. And why worry about a speck in your friend's eye when you have a log in your own? How can you think of saying to your friend, let me help you get rid of that speck in your eye when you can't see past the log in your own eye? You hypocrite, first get rid of the log in your own eye then you will see well enough to deal with the speck in your friend's eye. Don't waste what is holy on people who are unholy. Don't throw your pearls to pigs. They will trample the pearls, then turn and attack you. Keep on asking, and you will receive what you ask for. Keep on seeking, and you will find. Keep on knocking, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, everyone who seeks finds, and to everyone who knocks the door will be opened. You parents, if your children ask for a loaf of bread, do you give them a stone instead? Or if they ask for a fish, do you give them a snake? Of course not. So if you, sinful people, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give good gifts to those who ask him? Do to others whatever you would like them to do to you. This is the essence of all that is taught in the law and the prophets. You can enter God's kingdom only through the narrow gate. The highway to hell is broad and its gate is wide for the many who choose that way. But the gateway to life is very narrow and is difficult, and only a few ever find it. Beware of false prophets who come disguised as harmless sheep, but are really ravenous wolves. You can identify them by their fruit, that is, by the way they act. Can you pick grapes? from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? 
A good tree produces good fruit, and a bad tree produces bad fruit. So a good tree can't produce bad fruit, and a bad tree can't produce good fruit. So every tree that does not produce good fruit is chopped down and thrown into the fire. Yes, just as you can identify a tree by its fruit, so you can identify people by their actions. Not everyone who calls out to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. Only those who actually do the will of my Father in heaven will enter. On judgment day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, we prophesied in your name and cast out demons in your name and performed many miracles in your name. But I will reply, I never knew you. Get away from me, you who break God's laws. Anyone who listens to my teaching and follows it is wise, like a person who builds a house on solid rock. Though the rain comes in torrents and the floodwaters rise and the winds beat against that house, it won't collapse because it is built on bedrock. But anyone who hears my teaching and doesn't obey it is foolish, like a person who builds a house on sand. When the rains and floods come and the winds beat against that house, it will collapse with a mighty crash. When Jesus had finished saying these things, the crowds were amazed at his teaching, for he taught with real authority, quite unlike their teachers of religious law. Luke chapter 12, verses 35 through 48. Be dressed and ready for service, and keep your lamps burning like servants waiting for their master to return from a wedding banquet, so that when he comes and knocks, they can immediately open the door for him. It will be good for those servants whose master finds them watching when he comes. Truly, I tell you, he will dress himself to serve, will have them recline at the table, and will come and wait on them. It will be good for those servants whose master finds them ready, even if he comes in the middle of the night or toward daybreak. But understand this, if the owner of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You must also be ready, because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect him. Peter asked, Lord, are you telling this parable to us or to everyone? The Lord answered, Who then is the faithful and wise manager, whom the master puts in charge of his servants to give them their food allowance at the proper time? It will be good for that servant whom the master finds doing so when he returns. Truly I tell you, he will put him in charge of all his possessions. But suppose the servant says to himself, My master is taking a long time in coming, and he then begins to beat the other servants, both men and women, and to eat and drink and get drunk. The master of that servant will come on a day when he does not expect him, and at an hour he is not aware of. He will cut him to pieces and assign him a place with the unbelievers. The servant who knows the master's will and does not get ready or does not do what the master wants will be beaten with many blows. But the one who does not know and does things deserving punishment will be beaten with few blows. From everyone who has been given much, much will be demanded. And from the one who has been entrusted with much, much more will be asked. Matthew chapter 8 verses 5 through 15 When Jesus had entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him, asking for help. Lord, he said, my servant lies at home, paralyzed, 
suffering terribly. Jesus said to him, Shall I come and heal him? The centurion replied, Lord, I do not deserve to have you come under my roof, but just say the word and my servant will be healed. For I myself am a man under authority with soldiers under me. I tell this one, go, and he goes, and that one, come, and he comes. I say to my servant, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard this, he was amazed and said to those following him, truly I tell you, I have not found anyone in Israel with such great faith. I say to you that many will come from the east and the west and will take their places at the feast with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the subjects of the kingdom will be thrown outside into the darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then Jesus said to the centurion, Go, let it be done just as you believed it would. And his servant was healed at that very moment. John chapter 8 verses 1 through 20 Jesus returned to the Mount of Olives but early the next morning he was back again at the temple a crowd soon gathered and he sat down and taught them as he was speaking the teachers of religious law and the Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in the act of adultery. They put her in front of the crowd. Teacher, they said to Jesus, this woman was caught in the act of adultery. The law of Moses says to stone her. What do you say? They were trying to trap him into saying something they could use against him. But Jesus stooped down and wrote in the dust with his finger. They kept demanding an answer. So he stood up again and said, All right, but let one who has never sinned throw the first stone. Then he stooped down again and wrote in the dust. When the accusers heard this, they slipped away, one by one, beginning with the oldest, until only Jesus was left in the middle of the crowd with the woman. Then Jesus stood up again and said to the woman, Where are your accusers? Didn't even one of them condemn you? No, Lord, she said. And Jesus said, Neither do I. Go and sin no more. Jesus spoke to the people once more and said, I am the light of the world. If you follow me, you won't have to walk in darkness because you will have the light that leads to life. The Pharisees replied, You are making those claims about yourself. Such testimony is not valid. Jesus told them, These claims are valid, even though I make them about myself. For I know where I came from and where I am going. But you don't know this about me. You judge me by human standards. But I do not judge anyone, and if I did, my judgment would be correct in every respect, because I am not alone. The Father who sent me is with me. Your own law says that if two people agree 
about something. Their witness is accepted as fact. I am one witness, and my Father who sent me is the other. Where is your Father? they asked. Jesus answered, Since you don't know who I am, you don't know who my Father is. If you knew me, you would also know my Father. Jesus made these statements while he was teaching in the section of the temple known as the treasury, but he was not arrested because his time had not yet come. John chapter 6, verse 1 through 21. After this, Jesus crossed over to the far side of the Sea of Galilee, also known as the Sea of Tiberias. A huge crowd kept following him wherever he went, because they saw his miraculous signs as he healed the sick. Then Jesus climbed a hill and sat down with his disciples around him. Jesus soon saw a huge crowd of people coming to look for him. Turning to Philip, he asked, where can we buy bread to feed all these people? He was testing Philip for he already knew what he was going to do. Philip replied, even if we worked for months, we wouldn't have enough money to feed them. Then Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, spoke up. There's a young boy here with five barley loaves and two fish. But what good is that with this huge crowd? Tell everyone to sit down, Jesus said. So they all sat down on the grassy slopes. The men alone numbered about 5,000. Then Jesus took the loaves, gave thanks to God, and distributed them to the people. Afterward, he did the same with the fish, and they all ate as much as they wanted. After everyone was full, Jesus told his disciples, now gather the leftovers so that nothing is wasted. So they picked up the pieces and filled 12 baskets with scraps left by the people who had eaten from the five barley loaves. When the people saw him do this miraculous sign, they exclaimed, Surely he is the prophet we have been expecting. When Jesus saw that they were ready to force him to be their king, he slipped away into the hills by himself. That evening, Jesus' disciples went down to the shore to wait for him. But as darkness fell and Jesus hadn't come back, they got into the boat and headed across the lake toward Capernaum. Soon a gale swept down upon them and the sea grew very rough. They had rowed three or four miles when suddenly they saw Jesus walking on the water toward the boat. They were terrified, but he called out to them, Do not be afraid. I am here. Then they were eager to let him in the boat, and immediately they arrived at their destination. Matthew chapter 5 verses 1 through 16. One day as he saw the crowds gathering, Jesus went up 
on the mountainside and sat down. His disciples gathered around him, and he began to teach them. God blesses those who are poor and realize their need for him, for the kingdom of heaven is theirs. God blesses those who mourn, for they will be comforted. God blesses those who are humble, for they will inherit the whole earth. God blesses those who hunger and thirst for justice, for they will be satisfied. God blesses those who are merciful, for they will be shown mercy. God blesses those whose hearts are pure, for they will see God. God blesses those who work for peace, for they will be called the children of God. God blesses those who are persecuted for doing right, for the kingdom of heaven is theirs. God blesses you when people mock you and persecute you and lie about you and say all sorts of evil things against you because you are my followers. Be happy about it. Be very glad for a great reward awaits you in heaven. And remember, the ancient prophets were persecuted in the same way. You are the salt of the earth. But what good is salt if it has lost its flavor? Can you make it salty again? It will be thrown out and trampled underfoot as worthless. You are the light of the world, like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. No one lights a lamp and then puts it under a basket. Instead, a lamp is placed on a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your good deeds shine out for all to see, so that everyone will praise your heavenly Father. John chapter 3 verses 16 through 21 For this is how God loved the world. He gave his one and only Son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. God sent his Son into the world not to judge the world, but to save the world through him. There is no judgment against anyone who believes in him, but anyone who does not believe in him has already been judged for not believing in God's one and only Son. And the judgment is based on this fact. God's light came into the world, but people loved the darkness more than the light, for their actions were evil. All who do evil hate the light and refuse to go near it, for fear their sins will be exposed. But those who do what is right come to the light so others can see that they are doing what God wants. John chapter 5 verses 1 through 18 Some time later, Jesus went up to Jerusalem for one of the Jewish festivals. Now there is in Jerusalem, near the Sheep Gate, a pool which in Aramaic is called 
Bethesda, and which is surrounded by five covered colonnades. Here, a great number of disabled people used to lie, the blind, the lame, the paralyzed. One who was there had been an invalid for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and learned that he had been in this condition for a long time, he asked him, Do you want to get well? Sir, he replied, I have no one to help me get into the pool when the water is stirred. While I am trying to get in, someone else goes down ahead of me. Then Jesus said to him, Get up, pick up your mat, and walk. At once the man was cured. He picked up his mat and walked. The day on which this took place was a Sabbath, and so the Jewish leaders said to the man who had been healed, It is the Sabbath. The law forbids you to carry your mat. But he replied, The man who made me well said to me, Pick up your mat and walk. So they asked him, Who is this fellow who told you to pick it up and walk? The man who was healed had no idea who it was, for Jesus had slipped away into the crowd that was there. Later, Jesus found him at the temple and said to him, See, you are well again. Stop sinning, or something worse may happen to you. The man went away and told the Jewish leaders that it was Jesus who had made him well. So, because Jesus was doing these things on the Sabbath, the Jewish leaders began to persecute him. In his defense, Jesus said to them, My father is always at his work to this very day, and I too am working. For this reason, they tried all the more to kill him. Not only was he breaking the Sabbath, but he was even calling God his own father making himself equal with God. Matthew chapter 6 verses 25 through 34 Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body. What you will wear is not life more than food, and the body more than clothes. Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow. They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and thrown into the fire tomorrow, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? So do not worry, saying, What shall we eat? Or, What shall we drink? Or, What shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, 
and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Isaiah chapter 57 verses 18 through 19 I have seen their ways and I will heal them I will lead them and give comfort to them and to those who mourn for them I will create the right words Shalom Shalom to those far off and to those nearby says the Lord I will heal them 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 24 He bore our sins in his own body on the cross that we having died to sins might live for righteousness by his stripes you are healed Psalm chapter 20 verse 7 Some nations boast of their chariots and horses but we boast in the name of the Lord our God. Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 7 But blessed are those who trust in the Lord and have made the Lord their hope and confidence. 1 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 25 All athletes are disciplined in their training. They do it to win a prize that will fade away, but we do it for an eternal prize. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20. Now all glory to God, who is able through his mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8 Study this book of instruction continually meditate on it day and night so you will be sure to obey everything written in it only then will you prosper and succeed in all you do 1 Corinthians chapter 16 verse 33 Be on guard Stand firm in the faith. Be courageous. Be strong. Psalm chapter 42 verse 1 As a deer longs for streams of water, so I long for you, O God. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 18 So we don't look at the troubles we can see now. Rather, we fix our gaze on things that cannot be seen. For the things we see now will soon be gone, but the things we cannot see will last forever. Psalm chapter 30, verse 2. Lord my God, I called to you for help, and you healed me. Psalm chapter 42, verse 11. Why are you so cast down, O my soul? Why are you in turmoil within me? Put your hope in God, for I shall again praise Him, my salvation and my God. Psalm chapter 91, verses 10 through 11. No evil shall befall you, no plague come near your tent, for he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. Psalm chapter 107 verse 20 He sent out his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. Isaiah Chapter 40, verse 29. He gives power to the faint, and to him 
who has no might, he increases strength. Isaiah chapter 58 verse 8 Then shall your light break forth like the dawn, and your healing shall spring up fast. Your righteousness shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Malachi chapter 4 verse 2 But for you who fear my name, the sun of righteousness shall rise with healing in its wings. You shall go out leaping like calves from the stall. Colossians chapter 1 verse 11 May you be strengthened with all power according to his glorious might for all endurance and patience with joy. James chapter 4 verses 7 through 8 Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 14 Heal me, O Lord, and I shall be healed. Save me, and I shall be saved. For you are my praise. Psalm chapter 147, verse 3. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up all their wounds. Isaiah chapter 41, verse 10. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. 3 John chapter 1, verse 2 Dear friend, I pray that you may enjoy good health and that all may go well with you, even as your soul is getting along well. Philippians chapter 4, verse 19. And my God will meet all your needs according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. Revelations chapter 21, verse 4. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. John chapter 14, verse 27. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not be afraid. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 29. He gives strength to the weary, and increases the power of the weak. Psalm chapter 30, verse 2. Lord my God, I called to you for help, and you healed me. Psalm chapter 103, verses 2 through 4. Praise the Lord, my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion. Psalm chapter 23, verse 4. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid, for you are close beside me. Your rod and your staff protect and comfort me. Psalm chapter 16, verse 8. I have set the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I will not be shaken. Psalm chapter 27, 
verse 1. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Whom shall I dread? Psalm chapter 46, verse 11. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Nahum chapter 1, verse 7. The Lord is good, a refuge in times of trouble. He cares for those who trust in him. Proverbs chapter 17, verse 22. A joyful heart is good medicine, but a broken spirit dries up the bones. Psalm chapter 30, verses 10 through 11. Hear, Lord, and be merciful to me. Lord, be my help. You turned my wailing into dancing. You removed my sackcloth and clothed me with joy. Psalm chapter 46, verse 1. God is our refuge and strength, always ready to help in times of trouble. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 11. Yet God has made everything beautiful for its own time. He has planted eternity in the human heart. But even so, people cannot see the whole scope of God's work from beginning to end. Psalm chapter 73, verse 26. My health may fail and my spirit may grow weak, but God remains the strength of my heart. He is mine forever. Romans chapter 18, verse 13. I pray that God, the source of hope, will fill you completely with joy and peace because you trust in him. Then you will overflow with confident hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. Psalms chapter 95, verse 6. Come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker. 1 John chapter 4, verse 15. All who declare that Jesus is the Son of God have God living in them, and they live in God. Matthew chapter 6 verse 25. That is why I tell you not to worry about everyday life, whether you have enough food or drink or enough clothes to wear. Isn't life more than food and your body more than clothing? 1 Corinthians chapter 13 verse 13. Three things will last forever faith, hope, and love, and the greatest of these is love. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31. But those who trust in the Lord will find new strength. They will soar high on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. Hebrews Chapter 10, verse 23. Let us hold tightly without wavering to the hope we affirm, for God can be trusted to keep his promise. James chapter 1, verse 17. Whatever is good and perfect is a gift coming down to us from God our Father, who created all the lights in the heavens. He never changes or casts a shifting shadow. Numbers chapter 6 verses 24 through 26. May the Lord bless you and protect you. May the Lord smile on you and be gracious to you. 
May the Lord show you his favor and give you his peace. 1 John chapter 4 verse 18 Such love has no fear because perfect love expels all fear. If we are afraid, it is for fear of punishment, and this shows that we have not fully experienced His perfect love. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 16 through 18. Always be thankful. Never stop praying. Be thankful in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you who belong to Christ Jesus. John chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. No eye has seen, no ear has heard, and no mind has imagined what God has prepared for those who love him. Titus chapter 3 verse 4 When God our Savior reveals his kindness and love, he saved us not because of the righteous things we had done, but because of his mercy. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 16 So let us come boldly to the throne of our gracious God. There we will receive his mercy and we will find grace to help us when we need it most. John chapter 16 verse 33 I have told you all this so that you may have peace in me. Here on earth you will have many trials and sorrows, but take heart, because I have overcome the world. Matthew chapter 5 verse 14 You are the light of the world, like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. Job chapter 19 verse 25 but as for me, I know that my Redeemer lives, and he will stand upon the earth at last. Psalm chapter 55, verse 22. Give your burdens to the Lord, and he will take care of you. He will not permit the godly to slip and fall. Galatians chapter 5, verse 25. Have you never heard? Have you never understood? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of all the earth. He never grows weak or weary. No one can measure the depths of his understanding. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 3 But the Lord is faithful. He will strengthen you and guard you from the evil one. Joshua chapter 1 verse 9 Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Romans chapter 8 verse 28 And we know in all things God works for the good of those who love him who have been called according to his purpose. Deuteronomy chapter 33, verse 25. As your days are, so shall your strength be. Psalm chapter 55, verse 22. Give your burdens to the Lord, and he will take care of you. He will not permit the godly to slip and fall. Psalm chapter 39, verse 7. And so, Lord, where do I put my hope? My only hope is in you. Isaiah 
Chapter 54, verse 10. For the mountains may move, and the hills may disappear, but even then, my faithful love for you will never be broken, says the Lord, who has mercy on you. First Chronicles, chapter 16, verse 11. Search for the Lord and for his strength. Continually seek him. Second Corinthians, chapter 9, verse 8. And God will generously provide all you need. Then you will always have everything you need and plenty left over to share with others. Psalm chapter 19, verse 1. The heavens proclaim the glory of God. The skies display his craftsmanship. Isaiah chapter 60, verse 3. All nations will come to your light. Mighty kings will come to see your radiance. Romans chapter 8. Verse 11, the Spirit of God, who raised Jesus from the dead, lives in you. And just as God raised Christ Jesus from the dead, he will give life to your mortal bodies by this same Spirit living within you. Matthew chapter 5, verse 8, God blesses those whose hearts are pure for they will see God. Proverbs chapter 4 verse 23 Guard your heart above all else, for it is the wellspring of life. Psalm chapter 139 verse 10 Even there your hand will guide me, and your strength will support me. Isaiah Chapter 41, verse 13. For I hold you by your right hand, I, the Lord your God. And I say to you, don't be afraid, I am here to help you. 1 Thessalonians, chapter 5, verse 11. So encourage each other and build each other up, just as you are already doing. Psalm chapter 51, verse 10. Create in me a clean heart, O God. Renew a loyal spirit within me. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16. Don't you realize that all of you together are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God lives in you? Matthew chapter 5. Verse 4, God blesses those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Psalm chapter 27, verse 14, Wait patiently for the Lord. Be brave and courageous. Yes, wait patiently for the Lord. Psalms chapter 94, verse 19, When doubts filled my mind, your comfort gave me renewed hope and cheer. Luke chapter 1 verse 37 For the word of God will never fail. Psalm chapter 113 verse 3 Everywhere from east to west praise the name of the Lord. Revelation chapter 3 Verse 20, Look, I stand at the door and knock. If you hear my voice and open the door, I will come in, and we will share a meal together as friends. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 1, Imitate God, therefore, in everything you do, because you are his dear children. Joel Chapter 2, verse 13. Return to the Lord your God, for he is merciful and compassionate, slow.
slow to get angry and filled with unfailing love. He is eager to relent and not punish. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 13 The temptations in your life are no different from what others experience, and God is faithful. He will not allow the temptation to be more than what you can stand. When you are tempted, he will show you a way out so you can endure. John chapter 20 verse 29 Then Jesus told him, You believe because you have seen me. Blessed are those who believe without seeing me. 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 6 So humble yourselves under the mighty power of God, and at the right time he will lift you up in honor. Philippians chapter 2 verse 13 For God is working in you, giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases him. Matthew chapter 19 verse 26 Jesus looked at them intently and said, Humanly speaking, it is impossible but with God, everything is possible. James chapter 1, verse 12. God blesses those who patiently endure testing and temptation. Afterward, they will receive the crown of life that God has promised to those who love him. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Faith shows the reality of what we hope for. It is the evidence of things we cannot see. Psalm chapter 20, verse 7. Some nations boast of their chariots and horses, but we boast in the name of the Lord our God. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 4 through 10. But God is so rich in mercy, and he loved us so much, that even though we were dead because of our sins, he gave us life when he raised Christ from the dead. For he raised us from the dead along with Christ, and seated us with him in the heavenly realms, because we are united with Christ Jesus. So God can point to us in all future ages as examples of the incredible wealth of his grace and kindness towards us, as shown in all he has done for us who are united with Christ Jesus. God saved you by his grace when you believed, and you can't take credit for this. It is a gift from God. Salvation is not a reward for the good things we have done, so none of us can boast about it. For we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus, so we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. Ephesians chapter 3 verses 14 through 16. When I think of all of this, I fall to my knees and pray to the Father, the creator of everything in heaven and on earth. I pray that from his glorious, unlimited resources, he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. Now all glory to God who is able through his mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. Luke chapter 1 verse 37 For with God nothing shall be impossible.
Ephesians chapter 4 verse 21 through 24 since you have heard about Jesus and have learned the truth that comes from him throw off your old sinful nature and your former way of life which is corrupted by lust and deception instead let the Spirit renew your thoughts and attitudes put on your new nature created to be like God truly righteous and holy Ephesians chapter 5 verse 1 imitate God therefore in everything you do because you are his dear children Philippians chapter 2 verse 13 for God is working within you giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases him Isaiah chapter 33 verse 2 Lord be gracious to us we long for you be our strength every morning our salvation in time of distress Psalm chapter 119 verse 50 this is my comfort in my affliction that your promise gives me life Romans chapter 8 verse 28 and we know that for those who love God all things work together for good for those who are called according to his purpose Psalm chapter 34 verse 19 many are the afflictions of the righteous but the Lord delivers him out of them all Romans chapter 8 verse 35 who shall separate us from the love of Christ shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword Isaiah chapter 43 verse 2 when you pass through the waters I will be with you and through the rivers they shall not overwhelm you when you walk through fire you shall not be burned and the flame will not consume you second Corinthians chapter 1 verse 5 for as we share abundantly in Christ's sufferings so through Christ we share abundantly in his comfort too Romans chapter 8 verse 31 what shall we say about such wonderful things as these if God is for us who can ever be against us Colossians chapter 1 verse 27 for God wanted them to know that the riches and glory of Christ are for you Gentiles too and this is the secret Christ lives in you this gives you the assurance of sharing his glory Ephesians chapter 1 verses 19 through 20 I also pray that you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe him this is the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead and seated him in the place of honor at God's right hand in the heavenly realms Romans chapter 8 verse 8 but you are not controlled by your sinful nature you are controlled by the Spirit 
if you have the Spirit of God living in you. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 Faith shows the reality of what we hope for. It is the evidence of things we cannot see. Psalm chapter 139 verses 1 through 14 O Lord, you have examined my heart, and you know everything about me. You know when I sit down or stand up. You know my thoughts, even when I'm far away. You see me when I travel and when I rest at home. You know everything I do. You know what I'm going to say, even before I say, Lord. You go before me and follow me. You place your hand of blessing on my head. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too great for me to understand. I can never escape from your spirit. I can never get away from your presence. If I go up to heaven, you are there. If I go down to the grave, you are there. If I ride the wings of the morning, if I dwell by the farthest oceans, even there your hand will guide me and your strength will support me. I could ask the darkness to hide me and the light around me to become night. But even in the darkness, I cannot hide from you. To you, the night skies are as bright as day. Darkness and light are the same to you. You made all the delicate inner parts of my body. You knit me together in my mother's womb. Thank you for making me so wonderfully complex. Your workmanship is marvelous. How well I know it. First Corinthians chapter 13 verse 17 Love never gives up, never loses faith, is always hopeful, and endures through every circumstance. Romans chapter 10 verse 13 For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. First Peter chapter 5 verse 10 In his kindness God called you to share in his eternal glory by means of Christ Jesus. So after you have suffered a little while, he will restore, support, and strengthen you, and he will place you on a firm foundation. Matthew chapter 5 Verse 9, God blesses those who work for peace, for they will be called the children of God. Psalm chapter 29, verse 11, the Lord gives his people strength, the Lord blesses them with peace.
Romans chapter 16 verse 20 the God of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet may the grace of our Lord Jesus be with you Psalm chapter 119 verse 165 those who love your instructions have great peace and do not stumble Isaiah chapter 26 verse 12 Lord you will grant us peace all we have accomplished is really from you first Corinthians chapter 14 verse 33 for God is not a God of disorder but of peace as in all the meetings of God's holy people Psalm chapter 63 verses 1 through 5 O God you are my God I earnestly search for you my soul thirsts for you my whole body longs for you in this parched and weary land where there is no water I have seen you in your sanctuary and gazed upon your power and glory your unfailing love is better than life itself oh how I praise you I will praise you as long as I live lifting up my hands to you in prayer you satisfy me more than the richest feast I will praise you with songs of joy Ephesians chapter 5 verses 1 through 2 imitate God therefore in everything you do because you are his dear children live a life filled with love following the example of Christ he loved us and offered himself as a sacrifice for us a pleasing aroma to God Ephesians chapter 5 verse 8 for you once were full of darkness but now you have light from the Lord so live as people of light Ephesians chapter 6 verses 13 through 18 therefore put on every piece of God's armor so you will be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil then after the battle you will be standing firm stand your ground putting on the belt of truth and the body armor of God's righteousness for shoes put on the peace that comes from the good news so that you will be fully prepared in addition to all of these hold up the shield of faith to stop the fiery arrows of the devil put on salvation as your helmet and take the sword of the spirit which is the word of God Pray in the Spirit at all times and on every occasion. Stay alert and be persistent 
in your prayers for all believers everywhere. 1 John chapter 1 verse 9 But if we confess our sins to him, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all wickedness. James chapter 4 verses 5 through 8 Do you think the scriptures have no meaning? They say that God is passionate, that the spirit he has placed within us should be faithful to him, and he gives grace generously. As the scriptures say, God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. So humble yourselves before God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Come close to God, and God will come close to you. Wash your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts, for your loyalty is divided between God and the world. Proverbs chapter 28 verse 13 People who conceal their sins will not prosper, but if they confess and turn from them, they will receive mercy. Hebrews chapter 12 verses 5 through six. And have you forgotten the encouraging words God spoke to you as his children? He said, My child, don't make light of the Lord's discipline, and don't give up when he corrects you. For the Lord disciplines those he loves and he punishes each one he accepts as a child. Hebrews chapter 12 verses 1 through 2 Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up, and let us run with endurance the race God has set before us. We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. Hebrews chapter 13 verses 6 through 9. So we can say with confidence, the Lord is my helper, so I will have no fear. What can mere people do to me? Remember your leaders who taught you the word of God. Think of all the good that has come from their lives and follow the example of their faith. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday today and forever. So do not be attracted by strange new ideas. Your strength comes from God's grace, not from rules about food which don't help those who follow them. Acts 
Isaiah chapter 43 verse 2 When you go through deep waters, I will be with you. When you go through rivers of difficulty, you will not drown. When you walk through the fire of oppression, you will not be burned up. The flames will not consume you. Isaiah chapter 43 verses 18 through 19 Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. It is nothing compared to what I am going to do. For I am about to do something new. See, I have already begun. Do you not see it? I will make a pathway through the wilderness. I will create rivers in the dry wasteland. Second Corinthians chapter two, verse nine. My grace is all that you need. My power works best in weakness. So now I am glad to boast about my weakness so that the power of Christ can work through me. Proverbs chapter 4 verses 12 through 15 When you walk, you won't be held back. When you run, you won't stumble. Take hold of my instructions. Don't let them go. Guard them, for they are the key to life. Don't do as the wicked do, and don't follow the path of evildoers. Don't even think about it. Don't go that way. Turn away and keep moving. Psalm chapter 138 verse 6 Though the Lord is great, He cares for the humble, but He keeps His distance from the proud. Proverbs chapter 29 verse 23 One's pride will bring him low, but he who is lowly in spirit will obtain honor. Psalm chapter 34 verse 18 the Lord is close to the brokenhearted. He rescues those who are crushed in spirit. Psalm chapter 51 verse 7 Purify me from my sins and I will be clean. Wash me and I will be whiter than snow. Psalm chapter 36 verse 5 Your unfailing love, O Lord, is as vast as the heavens. Your faithfulness reaches beyond the clouds. Psalm chapter 51 verse 10 Create in me a clean heart, O God. Renew a loyal spirit within me. Psalm chapter 103, 
verse 8. The Lord is compassionate and merciful, slow to get angry, and filled with unfailing love. Psalm chapter 103 verse 11 For his unfailing love to those who fear him is as great as the height of the heavens above the earth. Romans chapter 6 verse 23 For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. Ephesians chapter 2 verses 8 through 9 God saved you by His grace when you believed. And you can't take credit for this. It is a gift from God. Salvation is not a reward for the good things we have done, so none of us can boast about it. 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 3 all praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is by His great mercy that we have been born again, because God raised Jesus Christ from the dead. Now we live with great expectation. Micah chapter 7 verse 18 Where is another God like you who pardons the guilt of the remnant overlooking the sins of his special people? You will not stay angry at your people forever because you delight in showing unfailing love. First Chronicles chapter 16 verse 34 Give thanks to the Lord for He is good. His faithful love endures forever. Psalm chapter 127 verse 2 It is vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrows, for so he gives his beloved sleep. Proverbs chapter 3 Verses 21 through 24. My child, don't lose sight of common sense and discernment. Hang on to them, for they will refresh your soul. They are like jewels on a necklace. They keep you safe on your way, and your feet will not stumble. You can go to bed without fear. You will lie down and sleep soundly. Jeremiah chapter 31 verse 26 My sleep is sweet to me, for I hear God and am comforted by Him even while I sleep. Psalm 
Chapter 121 I look up to the mountains. Does my help come from there? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not let you stumble. The one who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel never slumbers nor sleeps. The Lord himself watches over you. The Lord stands beside you as your protective shade. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon at night. The Lord keeps you from all harm and watches over your life. The Lord keeps watch over you as you come and go, both now and forever. Ezekiel chapter 34 verse 26 I will bless my people and their homes around my holy hill and in the proper season I will send the showers they need there will be showers of blessing Matthew chapter 11 verses 28 through 30 Then Jesus said, Come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you, because I am humble and gentle at heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy to bear, and the burden I give you is light. Ecclesiastes chapter 5 verse 12. People who work hard, sleep well, whether they eat little or much, but the rich seldom get a good night's sleep. Proverbs chapter 3 verses 21 through 24. My child, don't lose sight of common sense and discernment. Hang on to them, for they will refresh your soul. They are like jewels on a necklace. They will keep you safe on your way, and your feet will not stumble. You can go to bed without fear. You will lie down and sleep soundly. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 Therefore, since through God's mercy we have this ministry, we do not lose heart. Rather, we have renounced secret and shameful ways. We do not use deception, nor do we distort the word of God. On the contrary, by setting forth the truth plainly, we commend ourselves to everyone's conscience in the sight of God. And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. The God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers so that they cannot see the light of the gospel that displays the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. 
For what we preach is not ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord, and ourselves as your servants, for Jesus' sake. For God, who said, Let light shine out of darkness, made his light shine in our hearts, to give us the light of the knowledge of God's glory, displayed in the face of Christ. But we have this treasure in jars of clay, to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. We are hard-pressed on every side, but not crushed, perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed. We always carry around in our body the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may also be revealed in our body. For we who are alive are always being given over to death for Jesus' sake, so that his life may also be revealed in our mortal body. So then, death is at work in us, but life is at work in you. It is written, I believed, therefore I have spoken. Since we have that same spirit of faith, we also believe and therefore speak, because we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus from the dead will also raise us with Jesus and present us with you to himself. All this is for your benefit, so that the grace that is reaching more and more people may cause thanksgiving to overflow to the glory of God. Therefore, we do not lose heart, though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. Since what is seen is temporary, but what is seen is eternal. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16 through 18. Therefore, we do not lose heart, though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly We are being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. Since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. Second Peter, chapter three, verse nine. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. Instead, he is patient with you not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. Luke chapter 1 verse 39 For with God nothing shall be impossible. Philippians chapter 4 verses 6 through 7 Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds 
in Christ Jesus. John chapter 16, verse 33. I have told you these things, so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. First Peter chapter 5 verse 7 Give all your worries to him because he cares for you. John chapter 6 verse 37 All those the Father gives me will come to me and whoever comes to me, I will never drive away. Psalm chapter 46 verse 10. He says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. Philippians chapter 4 verse 19 But my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. John chapter 14 Verse 18, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Ephesians 3.20, Now all glory to God, who is able, through his mighty power at work within us, to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. Psalm chapter 91 verses 1 through 2 Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Second Corinthians chapter 9 verse 8 And God will generously provide all you need. Then you will always have everything you need and plenty left over to share with others. Titus chapter 3 verse 5 he saved us, not because of righteous things we have done, but because of his mercy. He saved us through the washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit. Joshua chapter 1 verse 9 Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Romans chapter 5 verse 8 But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Romans chapter 8 verse 28 And we know that all things work together for good to those that love God, to those 
who are called according to his purpose. Jeremiah chapter 31 verse 3 The Lord appeared to us in the past, saying, I have loved you with an everlasting love. I have drawn you with unfailing kindness. Psalm chapter 85 verse 15 But you, Lord, are a compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness. Isaiah chapter 54 verse 10 Though the mountains be shaken and the hills be removed, yet my unfailing love for you will not be shaken, nor my covenant of peace be removed, says the Lord who has compassion on you. Ephesians chapter 3 verses 17 through 19 so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith and I pray that you being rooted and established in love may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and how long and high and deep is the love of Christ and to know this love that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God Proverbs chapter 3 verse 5 trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding second corinthians chapter 5 verse 7 for we live by faith and not by sight matthew chapter 11 verses 28 through 30 then Jesus said, Come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you, because I am humble and gentle at heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy to bear, and the burden I give you is light. Matthew chapter 6 verses 33 through 34 Seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously and he will give you everything you need. So don't worry about tomorrow for tomorrow will bring its own worries. Today's trouble is enough for today. Matthew chapter 28 verse 30 Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you and be sure of this I am with you always even to the end of the age Mark chapter 6 verse 31 Then Jesus said Let's go off by ourselves to a quiet place and rest a while. He said this because there were so many people coming and going that Jesus and his apostles didn't even have time to eat. Mark chapter 11 verse 24 I tell you, you can pray for anything and if you believe that you've received it, it will be yours. Luke chapter 11 verse 9 
And so I tell you, keep on asking, and you will receive what you ask for. Keep on seeking, and you will find. Keep on knocking, and the door will be opened to you. Luke chapter 12, verses 22 through 23. Then, turning to his disciples, Jesus said, That is why I tell you not to worry about everyday life, whether you have enough food to eat or clothes to wear. For life is more than food, and your body more than clothing. Luke chapter 12, verse 32. So don't be afraid, little flock, for it gives your father great happiness to give you the kingdom. John chapter 14, verse 27. I am leaving you with a gift, peace of mind and heart. And the peace I give is a gift the world cannot give. So don't be troubled or afraid. John chapter 16, verse 33. I have told you all of this so that you may have peace in me. Here on earth you will have many trials and sorrows, but take heart because I have overcome the world. Romans chapter 8, verse 28. And we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love him and who are called according to his purpose. Romans chapter 8 verses 38 through 39 And I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love, neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither our fears for today nor our worries about tomorrow. Not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. Romans chapter 15 verse 13 I pray that God, the source of hope, will fill you completely with joy and peace because you trust in Him. Then, you will overflow with confident hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13 The temptations in your life are no different from what others experience. And God is faithful. He will not allow the temptation to be more than what you can stand. When you are tempted, he will show you a way out so that you can endure. 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verses 3 through 4 All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is our merciful Father and the source of all comfort. He comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort others. When they are troubled, we will be able to give them the same comfort God has given us. Philippians chapter 4 verses 6 through 7 Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank Him for all He has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. Philippians chapter 4, 
verse 13. For I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. Colossians chapter 3 verse 15. And let the peace that comes from Christ rule in your hearts. For as members of one body, you are called to live in peace. And always be thankful. Colossians chapter 3 verses 23 through 24. Work willingly at whatever you do, as though you were working for the Lord rather than for people. Remember that the Lord will give you an inheritance as your reward, and that the Master you are serving is Christ. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verses 16 through 18 Always be joyful. Never stop praying. Be thankful in all circumstances. For this is God's will for you who belong to Christ Jesus. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 verse 16 Now may the Lord of peace himself give you his peace at all times and in every situation the Lord be with you all. 1 Timothy chapter 6 verse 6 Yet true godliness with contentment is itself great wealth. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 16 So let us come boldly to the throne of our gracious God. There we will receive his mercy and we will find grace to help us when we need it most. Hebrews chapter 13 verses 5 through 6 Don't love money. Be satisfied with what you have. For God has said, I will never fail you. I will never abandon you. So we can say with confidence, The Lord is my helper. So I will have no fear. What can mere people do to me? James chapter 1 verses 2 through 4 Dear brothers and sisters, when troubles of any kind come your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. For you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. So let it grow, for when your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect and complete, needing nothing. James chapter 4 verses 7 through 8 So humble yourselves before God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Come close to God, and God will come close to you. Wash your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts, for your loyalty is divided between God and the world. 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 6 through 7. So humble yourselves under the mighty power of God, and at the right time, He will lift you up in honor. Give all your worries and cares to God, for He cares about you. 1 John chapter 3, verse 1. See how very much our Father loves us, for He calls us 
his children, and that is what we are. 1 John chapter 4, verse 18 Such love has no fear, because perfect love casts out all fear. If we are afraid, it is for fear of punishment, and this shows that we have not fully experienced His perfect love. Revelation chapter 21 verse 4 He will wipe every tear from their eyes, and there will be no more death, or sorrow, or crying, or pain. All these things are gone forever. Matthew chapter 6 verse 27 Can all your worries add a single moment to your life? Matthew chapter 11 verse 29 Take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you because I am humble and gentle at heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Matthew chapter 24 verse 35 Heaven and earth will disappear, but my words will never disappear. Mark Chapter 4, verse 39. When Jesus woke up, he rebuked the wind and said to the waves, Silence, be still. Suddenly, the wind stopped, and there was a great calm. Luke, chapter 6, verse 38. Give, and you will receive. Your gift will return to you in full, pressed down, shaken together to make room for more, running over and poured into your lap. The amount you give will determine the amount you get back. Luke chapter 12 verses 6 through 7 What is the price of five sparrows, two copper coins? Yet God does not forget a single one of them, and the very hairs on your head are all numbered. So don't be afraid. You are more valuable to God than a whole flock of sparrows. Luke chapter 12 verses 27 through 28. Look at the lilies and how they grow. They don't work or make their clothing. Yet Solomon in all his glory was not dressed as beautifully as they are. And if God cares so wonderfully for flowers that they are here today and thrown into the fire tomorrow, he will certainly care for you. Why do you have so little faith? Luke chapter 21 verse 19 By standing firm, you will win your souls. John chapter 6 verse 35 Jesus replied, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry again. Whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. John chapter 14 verse 1 Don't let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God, and trust also in me. 
John chapter 14 verse 18 No, I will not abandon you as orphans. I will come to you. John chapter 16 verse 23 At that time you won't need to ask me for anything. I tell you the truth. You will ask the Father directly, and he will grant your request because you use my name. John chapter 16, verse 27. For the Father himself loves you dearly because you love me and believe that I came from God. Romans chapter 5 verse 1 Therefore, since we have been made right in God's sight by faith, we have peace with God because of what Jesus Christ our Lord has done for us. Romans chapter 8 verse 15 So you have not received a spirit that makes you fearful slaves. Instead, you received God's spirit when he adopted you as his own children. Now we call him Abba, Father. Romans chapter 12, verse 12. Rejoice in our confident hope. Be patient in trouble and keep on praying. Philippians chapter 4 verse 19 And this same God who takes care of me will supply all your needs from his glorious riches which have been given to us in Christ Jesus. Philippians chapter 4 verse 23 May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 7 For God has not given us a spirit of fear and timidity, but of power, love, and self-discipline. I waited patiently for the Lord to help me, and he turned to me and heard my cry. He lifted me out of the pit of despair, out of the mud and the mire. He set my feet on solid ground and steadied me as I walked along. He has given me a new song to sing, a hymn of praise to our God. Many will see what he has done and be amazed. They will put their trust in the Lord. Oh, the joys of those who trust the Lord, who have no confidence in the proud, or in those who worship idols. O Lord, my God, you have performed many wonders for us. Your plans for us are too numerous to list. You have no equal. If I tried to recite all your wonderful deeds, I would never come to the end of them. You take no delight in sacrifices or offerings. Now that you have made me listen, I finally understand. You don't require burnt offerings or sin offerings. Then I said, look, I have come as it is written about me in the scriptures. 
I take joy in doing your will, my God, for your instructions are written on my heart. I have told all your people about your justice. I have not been afraid to speak out as you, O Lord, well know. I have not kept the good news of your justice hidden in my heart. I have talked about your faithfulness and saving power. I have told everyone in the great assembly of your unfailing love and faithfulness. Lord, don't hold back your tender mercies from me. Let your unfailing love and faithfulness always protect me. For troubles surround me, too many to count. My sins pile up so high, I can't see my way out. They outnumber the hairs on my head. I have lost all courage. Please, Lord, rescue me. Come quickly, Lord, and help me. May those who try to destroy me be humiliated and put to shame. May those who take delight in my trouble be turned back in disgrace. Let them be horrified by their shame, for they said, we've got him now. But may all who search for you be filled with joy and gladness in you. May those who love your salvation repeatedly shout, the Lord is great. As for me, since I am poor and needy, let the Lord keep me in his thoughts. You are my helper and my savior. My God, do not delay. Psalms 46 God is our refuge and strength, always ready to help in times of trouble. So we will not fear when earthquakes come and the mountains crumble into the sea. Let the oceans roar and foam. Let the mountains tremble as the waters surge. A river brings joy to the city of our God, the sacred home of the Most High. God dwells in that city. It cannot be destroyed. From the very break of day, God will protect it. The nations are in chaos, and their kingdom crumbles. God's voice thunders, and the earth melts. The Lord of heaven's armies is here among us. The God of Israel is our fortress. Come, see the glorious works of the Lord. See how he brings destruction upon the world. He causes wars to end throughout the earth. He breaks the bow and snaps the spear. He burns the shields with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be honored by every nation. I will be honored throughout the world. 
the Lord of heaven's armies is here among us. The God of Israel is our fortress. Psalm 23 The Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I need. He lets me rest in green meadows. He leads me beside peaceful streams. He renews my strength. He guides me along bright paths, bringing honor to his name. Even when I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid, for you are close beside me. Your rod and your staff protect me and comfort me. You prepare a feast for me in the presence of my enemies. You honor me by anointing my head with oil. My cup overflows with blessings. Surely your goodness and unfailing love will pursue me all the days of my life, and I will live in the house of the Lord forever. Psalm 91 Those who live in the shelter of the Most High will find rest in the shadow of the Almighty. This I declare about the Lord. He alone is my refuge, my place of safety. He is my God, and I trust him, for he will rescue you from every trap. He will protect you from deadly diseases. He will cover you with his feathers. He will shelter you with his wings. His faithful promises are your armor and protection. Do not be afraid of the terrors of the night, nor the arrow that flies in the day. Do not dread the disease that stalks in the darkness, nor the disaster that strikes at midday. Though a thousand fall at your side, though ten thousand are dying around you, these evils will not touch you. Just open your eyes and see how the wicked are punished. If you make the Lord your refuge, if you make the Most High your shelter, no evil will conquer you. No plague will come near your home, for he will order his angels to protect you wherever you go. They will hold you up with their hands, so you won't even hurt your foot on a stone. You will trample upon lions and cobras. You will crush fierce lions and serpents under your feet. The Lord says, I will rescue those who love me. I will protect those who trust in my name. When they call on me, I will answer. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue and honor them. I will reward them with a long life and give them my salvation. Psalm 93 The Lord is King. He is robed in majesty. 
Indeed, the Lord is robed in majesty and armed with strength. The world stands firm and cannot be shaken. Your throne, O Lord, has stood from time immemorial. You yourself are from the everlasting past. The floods have risen up, O Lord. The floods have roared like thunder. The floods have lifted their pounding waves. But mightier than the violent raging of the seas, mightier than the breakers on the shore, the Lord above is mightier than these. Your royal laws cannot be changed. Your reign, O Lord, is holy forever and ever. Psalm 128 Blessed are all who fear the Lord, who walk in obedience to Him. You will eat the fruit of your labor. Blessings and prosperity will be yours. Your wife will be like a fruitful vine within your house. Your children will be like olive shoots around your table. Yes, this will be the blessing for the man who fears the Lord. May the Lord bless you from Zion. May you see the prosperity of Jerusalem all the days of your life. May you live to see your children's children. Peace be on Israel. Psalm 7 I come to you for protection, O Lord my God. Save me from my persecutors. Rescue me. If you don't, they will maul me like a lion, tearing me to pieces with no one to rescue me. O Lord, my God, if I have done wrong or am guilty of justice, if I have betrayed a friend or plundered my enemy without cause, then let my enemies capture me. Let them trample me into the ground and drag my honor in the dust. Arise, O Lord, in anger. Stand up against the fury of my enemies. Wake up, my God, and bring justice. Gather the nations before you. Rule over them on high. The Lord judges the nations. Declare me righteous, O Lord, for I am innocent, O Most High. End the evil of those who are wicked, and defend the righteous. For you look deep within the mind and heart, O righteous God. God is my shield, saving those whose hearts are true and right. God is an honest judge. He is angry with the wicked every day. If a person does not repent, God will sharpen his sword. He will bend and string his bow. He will prepare his deadly weapons and shoot his flaming arrows. The wicked conceive evil. They are pregnant with trouble and give birth to lies. They dig a deep pit to trap others. 
then fall into it themselves. The trouble they make for others backfires on them. The violence they plan falls on their own heads. I will thank the Lord because he is just. I will sing praise to the name of the Lord Most High. Psalm 100 Shout with joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him singing with joy. Acknowledge that the Lord is God. He made us, and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good. His unfailing love continues forever and his faithfulness continues to each generation. Psalm 121 I look up to the mountains. Does my help come from there? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not let you stumble. The one who watches over you will not slumber. Instead, he who watches over Israel never slumbers nor sleeps. The Lord himself watches over you. The Lord stands beside you as your protective shade. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon at night. The Lord keeps you from all harm and watches over your life. The Lord keeps watch over you as you come and go, both now and forever. Psalm 150 Praise God in His sanctuary. Praise Him in His mighty heaven. Praise Him for His mighty works. Praise Him for His unequal greatness. Praise Him with a blast of the ram's horn. Praise Him with the lyre and harp. Praise Him with the tambourine and dancing. Praise Him with strings and flutes. Praise Him with a clash of cymbals. Praise Him with loud clanging cymbals. Let everything that has breath sing praises to the Lord. Praise the Lord. Psalm chapter 34, verse 4. I prayed to the Lord, and he answered me. He freed me from all my fears. Psalm chapter 46, verse 1. God is our refuge and strength, always ready to help in times of trouble. Psalm chapter 55, verse 22. Give your burdens to the Lord, and He will take care of you. He will not permit the godly 
to slip and fall. Psalm chapter 62, verses 1 through 2. I wait quietly before God, for my victory comes from Him. He alone is my rock and my salvation, my fortress where I will never be shaken. Psalm chapter 91, verses 1 through 2. Those who live in the shelter of the Most High will find rest in the shadow of the Almighty. This I declare about the Lord. He alone is my refuge, my place of safety. He is my God, and I trust Him. Psalm chapter 103, verses 1 through 2. Let all that I am praise the Lord. With my whole heart, I will praise His holy name. Let all that I am praise the Lord. May I never forget the good things He does for me. Psalm chapter 118, verse 5. In my distress, I prayed to the Lord, and the Lord answered me and set me free. Psalm chapter 119, verse 165. For those who love your instructions have great peace and do not stumble. Psalm chapter 121, verses 1 through 2. I look up to the mountains. Does my help come from there? No. My help comes from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. Psalm chapter 139, verses 23 through 24. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. Point out anything in me that offends you, and lead me along the path of everlasting life. Psalm chapter 145, verse 18. The Lord is close to all those who call on Him. Yes, to all those who call on Him in truth. Psalm chapter 147, verse 3. He heals the brokenhearted and bandages their wounds. Psalm chapter 16, verse 8. I know the Lord is always with me. I will not be shaken, for He is right beside me. Psalm chapter 19, verse 14. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Psalm chapter 27, verse 1. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Psalm chapter 29 verse 11 The Lord gives his people strength. The Lord blesses them with peace. Psalm chapter 30 verse 5 Weeping may last through the night, but joy comes with the morning. Psalm chapter 37, verse 7. Be still in the presence of the Lord and wait patiently for Him to act. Don't worry about evil people who prosper or fret 
about their wicked schemes. Psalm chapter 46 verse 10 Be still and know that I am God. I will be honored by every nation. I will be honored throughout the world. Psalm chapter 62 verse 5 through 6 Let all that I am wait quietly before God, for my hope is in Him. He alone is my rock and my salvation, my fortress where I will not be shaken. Psalm chapter 63 Verse 1 O oh God, you are my God. I earnestly search for you. My soul thirsts for you. My whole body longs for you in this parched and weary land where there is no water. Psalm chapter 85, verse 8 I listen carefully to what God the Lord is saying, for he speaks peace to his faithful people, but let them not return to their foolish ways. Psalm chapter 91 verse 4, he will cover you with his feathers, he will shelter you with his wings, his faithful promises are your armor and protection. Psalm chapter 94 verse 19 When doubts fill my mind, your comfort gave me renewed hope and cheer. Psalm chapter 103 verses 13 through 14 The Lord is like a father to his children, tender and compassionate to those who fear him. For he knows how weak we are. He remembers we are only dust. Psalm chapter 107 verses 19 through 20. Lord, help, they cried in their trouble, and he saved them from their distress. He sent out his word and healed them, snatching them from the door of death. Psalm chapter 116 verse 7 Let my soul be at rest again, for the Lord has been good to me. Psalm chapter 119 verse 50 Your promises revive me. It comforts me in all my troubles. Psalm chapter 119 verse 76 Now let your unfailing love comfort me just as you promised me your servant. Psalm chapter 121 verses 7 through 8 The Lord keeps you from all harm and watches over your life. The Lord keeps watch over you as you come and go, both now and forever. Psalm chapter 119, verse 165. Those who love your instructions have great peace and do not stumble. Psalm Chapter 123, verse 1. I lift my eyes to you, O God, enthroned in heaven. Psalm, chapter 131, verse 2. But I have calmed and quieted myself. I am like a weaned child with its mother. Like a weaned child, I am content. Psalm chapter 138 verse 3 
As soon as I pray, you answer me. You encourage me by giving me strength. Psalm chapter 139 verses 1 through 2 O Lord, you have examined my heart and know everything about me. You know when I sit down or stand up. You know my thoughts even when I'm far away. Psalm chapter 143 verse 8 Let me hear of your unfailing love each morning, for I am trusting you. Show me where to walk, for I give myself to you. Psalm chapter 145 verse 8 the Lord is merciful and compassionate, slow to get angry, and filled with unfailing love. Psalm chapter 147 verse 3 He heals the brokenhearted and bandages their wounds. Psalm chapter 16 verse 8 I know the Lord is always with me. I will not be shaken, for he is right beside me. Psalm chapter 19, verse 14. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing to you, O Lord, my rock and redeemer. Psalm Chapter 27, verse 1. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Psalm, chapter 30, verse 5. Weeping may last through the night. But joy comes with the morning. Psalm chapter 55 verse 22 Give your burdens to the Lord, and He will take care of you. He will not permit the godly to slip and fall. Psalm chapter 91 He who lives in the safe place of the Most High will be in the shadow of the All-Powerful. I will say to the Lord, You are my safe and strong place, my God, in whom I trust. For it is He who takes you away from the trap and from the killing sickness. He will cover you with His wings and under His wings you will be safe. He is faithful like a safe covering and a strong wall. You will not be afraid of trouble at night or of the arrow that flies by day. You will not be afraid of the sickness that walks in darkness or of the trouble that destroys at noon. A thousand may fall at your side, and ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only look on with your eyes and see how the sinful are punished, because you have made the Lord your safe place, and the Most High the place where you live. Nothing will hurt you, no trouble will come near nor tent, for he will tell his angels to care for you and keep you in all your ways. They hold you up with their hands, so your foot will not hit against a stone. You will walk upon the lion and the snake. You will crush under your feet the young lion and the snake. Because he has loved me, I will bring him 
out of trouble. I will set him in a safe place on high, because he has known my name. He will call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will take him out of trouble and honor him. I will please him with a long life, and I will show him my saving power. Psalm chapter 93 The Lord rules. He is dressed with great power. The Lord has dressed himself with strength. For sure, the world is built to last. It will not be moved. Your throne is set up from long ago. You have always been. The floods have lifted up, O Lord. The floods have lifted up their voice. The floods lift up their beating waves. The Lord on high is more powerful than the sound of many waters and the strong waves of the sea. Your word is very sure, O Lord. Your house is holy forever. Psalm chapter 5, verses 11 through 12. But let all who take refuge in you rejoice. Let them sing joyful praises forever. Spread your protection over them, that all who love your name may be filled with joy. For you bless the godly, O Lord. You surround them with your shield of love. Psalm chapter 8 O Lord our God, your majestic name fills the earth. Your glory is higher than the heavens. You have taught children and infants to tell of your strength. Silencing your enemies and all who oppose you when I look at the night sky and see the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars you set in place, what are mere mortals that you should think about them, human beings that you should care for them? Yet you made them only a little lower than God and crowned them with glory and honor. You gave them charge of everything you made, putting all things under their authority, the flocks and the herds, and all the wild animals, the birds in the sky, and the fish in the sea, and everything that swims the ocean currents. O Lord, our Lord, your majestic name fills the earth. Psalm Chapter 13, verses 5 through 6. But I trust in your unfailing love. I will rejoice because you have rescued me. I will sing to the Lord because he is good to me. Psalm chapter 18. I love you, Lord. You are my strength. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my savior. My God is my rock, in whom I find protection. He is my shield, the power that saves me, and my place of safety. I called on the Lord, who is worthy of praise, and he saved me from my enemies. The ropes of death entangled me. Floods of destruction swept over me. The grave wrapped its ropes around me. Death laid a trap in my path. But in my distress, I cried out to the Lord. Yes, I prayed to God for my help. He heard me from his sanctuary. 
my cry to him reached his ears. Then the earth quaked and trembled. The foundations of the mountains shook. They quaked because of his anger. Smoke poured from his nostrils. Fierce flames leaped from his mouth. Glowing coals blazed forth from him. He opened the heavens and came down. Dark storm clouds were beneath his feet. Mounted on a mighty angelic being, he flew, soaring on the wings of the wind. He shrouded himself in darkness, veiling his approach with dark rain clouds. Thick clouds shielded the brightness around him and rained down hail and burning coals. The Lord thundered from heaven. The voice of the Most High resounded amid the hail and burning coals. He shot his arrows and scattered his enemies. Great bolts of lightning flashed and they were confused. Then at your command, O Lord, at the blast of your breath, the bottom of the sea could be seen, and the foundations of the earth were laid bare. He reached down from heaven and rescued me. He drew me out of deep waters. He rescued me from my powerful enemies, from those who hated me and were too strong for me. They attacked me when I was in distress, but the Lord supported me. He led me to a place of safety. He rescued me because he delights in me. The Lord rewarded me for doing right. He restored me because of my innocence, for I have kept the ways of the Lord. I have not turned from my God to follow evil. I have followed all his regulations. I have never abandoned his decrees. I am blameless before God. I have kept myself from sin. The Lord rewarded me for doing right. He has seen my innocence. To the faithful, you show yourself faithful. To those with integrity, you show integrity. To the pure, you show yourself pure. But to the crooked, you show yourself shrewd. You rescue the humble, but you humiliate the proud. You light a lamp for me. The Lord my God lights up my darkness. In your strength, I can crush an army. With my God, I can scale any wall. God's way is perfect. All the Lord's promises prove true. He is a shield for all who look to him for protection. For who is God except the Lord? Who but our God is a solid rock? God arms me with strength, and he makes my way perfect. He makes me as sure-footed as a deer, enabling me to stand on mountain heights. He trains my hands for battle. He strengthens my arm to draw a bronze bow. You have given me your shield of victory. Your right hand supports me. Your help has made me great. You have made a wide path for my feet to keep them from slipping. I chased my enemies and caught them. I did not stop until they were conquered. I struck them down so they could not get up. They fell beneath my feet. You have armed me with strength for the battle. 
you have subdued my enemies under my feet. Psalm chapter 19 The heavens proclaim the glory of God. The skies display his craftsmanship. Day after day they continue to speak. Night after night they make him known. They speak without a sound or word. Their voice is never heard, yet their message has gone throughout the earth, and their words to all the world. God has made a home in the heavens for the sun. It bursts forth like a radiant bridegroom after his wedding. It rejoices like a great athlete eager to run the race. The sun rises at one end of the heavens, and nothing follows its course to the other end. Nothing can hide from its heat. The instructions of the Lord are perfect, reviving the soul. The decrees of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise the simple. The commandments of the Lord are right, bringing joy to the heart. The commands of the Lord are clear, giving insight for living. Reverence for the Lord is pure, lasting forever. The laws of the Lord are true. Each one is fair. They are more desirable than gold even the finest gold. They are sweeter than honey, even honey dripping from the comb. They are a warning to your servant, a great reward for those who obey them. How can I know all the sins lurking in my heart? Cleanse me from these hidden faults. Keep your servant from deliberate sins. Don't let them control me. Then I will be free of guilt and innocent of great sin. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Isaiah chapter 41 verse 10. Don't be afraid, for I am with you. Do not be discouraged, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will hold you up with my victorious right hand. Isaiah chapter 53 verse 5 But he was pierced for our rebellion crushed for our sins. He was beaten so we could be whole. He was whipped so we could be healed. Jeremiah chapter 30 verse 17. I will give you back your health and heal your wounds, says the Lord, for you are called an outcast. Matthew chapter 11 verses 28 through 30 Then Jesus said, Come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you, because I am humble and gentle at heart and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy to bear, and the burden I give you is light. Mark chapter 5 verse 34 And he said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace. Your suffering is over. 
Mark, chapter 10, verse 52. And Jesus said to him, Go, for your faith has healed you. Instantly, the man could see, and he followed Jesus down the road. Acts, chapter 10, verse 38. And know that God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. Then Jesus went around doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. James chapter 5 verse 14 through 15. Are any of you sick? You should call for the elders of the church to come and pray over you, anointing you with oil in the name of the Lord. Such a prayer offered in faith will heal the sick, and the Lord will make you well. And if you have committed any sins, you will be forgiven. 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 24 He personally carried our sins in his body on the cross so that we can be dead to sin and live for what is right. By his wounds you are healed. 3 John chapter 1 verse 2 Dear friend, I hope all is well with you and that you are as healthy in body as you are strong in spirit. Revelation chapter 21 verse 4 He will wipe every tear from their eyes and there will be no more death or sorrow or crying or pain. All these things are gone forever. Matthew chapter 9 verse 35 Jesus traveled through all the towns and villages of that area, teaching in the synagogues and announcing the good news about the kingdom. And he healed every kind of disease and illness. Matthew chapter 14 verse 36 They begged him to let the sick touch at least the fringe of his robe, and all who touched him were healed. Luke chapter 4 verse 40 As the sun went down that evening, people throughout the village brought sick family members to Jesus. No matter what their diseases were, the touch of his hand healed every one. Luke chapter 9 verse 6 so, they began their circuit of the villages, preaching the good news and healing the sick. Luke chapter 10 verse 9 Heal the sick and tell them, The kingdom of God is near you now. Acts chapter 5 verse 16. Crowds came from the villages around Jerusalem, bringing their sick and those possessed by evil spirits, and they were all healed. James chapter 5 verse 16. Confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. 
The earnest prayer of a righteous person has great power and produces wonderful results. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9 The same Spirit gives great faith to another, and to someone else the one Spirit gives the gift of healing. Galatians chapter 3, verse 13 But Christ has rescued us from the curse pronounced by the law. When he was hung on that cross, he took upon himself the curse of our wrongdoing. For it is written in the scriptures, Cursed is everyone who is hung on a tree. Philippians chapter 4 verses 6 through 7 Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank Him for all He has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. Colossians chapter 1 verse 11 We also pray that you will be strengthened with all his glorious power so you will have all the endurance and patience you need. May you be filled with joy. Colossians chapter 3 verse 15 And let the peace that comes from Christ rule in your hearts. For as members of one body you are called to live in peace and always be thankful. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 23 Now may the God of peace make you holy in every way and may your whole spirit and soul and body be kept blameless until our Lord Jesus Christ comes again. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 16 So let us come boldly to the throne of our gracious God. There we will receive his mercy and we will find grace to help us when we need it the most. Hebrews chapter 12 verses 12 through 13. So take a new grip with your tired hands and strengthen your weak knees. Mark out a straight path for your feet so that those who are weak and lame will not fall but become strong. 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 7. Give all your worries and cares to God, for He cares about you. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 10 In His kindness, God called you to share in His eternal glory by means of Christ Jesus. So after you have suffered a little while. He will restore, support, and strengthen you, and he will place you on a firm foundation. 1 John chapter 4, verse 18. Such love has no fear, because perfect love expels all fear. 
If we are afraid, it is for fear of punishment. And this shows that we have not fully experienced His perfect love. Hebrews chapter 11 verses 1 through 35 Faith shows the reality of what we hope for. It is the evidence of things we cannot see. Through their faith, the people in days of old earned a good reputation. By faith, we understand that the entire universe was formed at God's command. That what we now see did not come from anything that can be seen. It was by faith that Abel brought a more acceptable offering to God than Cain did. Abel's offering gave evidence that he was a righteous man, and God showed his approval of his gifts. Although Abel is long gone, he still speaks to us by his example of faith. It was by faith that Enoch was taken up to heaven without dying. He disappeared because God took him. For before he was taken up, he was known as a person who pleased God, and it is impossible to please God without faith. Anyone who wants to come to Him must believe that God exists and that He rewards those who sincerely seek Him. It was by faith that Noah built a large boat to save his family from the flood. He obeyed God, who warned him about things that had never happened before. By his faith, Noah condemned the rest of the world, and he received the righteousness that comes by faith. It was by faith that Abraham obeyed when God called him to leave home and go to another land that God would give him as his inheritance. He went without knowing where he was going, and even when he reached the land God promised him, he lived there by faith, for he was like a foreigner living in tents. And so did Isaac and Jacob, who inherited the same promise. Abraham was confidently looking forward to a city with eternal foundations, a city designed and built by God. It was by faith that even Sarah was able to have a child. Though she was barren and too old, she believed that God would keep his promise. And so a whole nation came from this one man who was as good as dead. A nation with so many people, like the stars in the sky and the sand on the seashore, there is no way to count them. All these people died still believing what God had promised them, but they did not receive what was promised, but they saw it all from a distance and welcomed it. They agreed that they were foreigners and nomads here on earth. Obviously, people who say such things are looking forward to a country they can call their own. If they had longed for the country they came from, they could have gone back. But they were looking for a better place, a heavenly homeland. That is why God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. It was by faith that Abraham offered Isaac as a sacrifice when God was testing him. Abraham, who had received God's promises, was ready to sacrifice his only son, Isaac, even though God had told him, Isaac is the son through whom your descendants 
will be counted. Abraham reasoned that if Isaac died, God was able to bring him back to life again. And in a sense, Abraham did receive his son back from the dead. It was by faith that Isaac promised blessings for the future to his sons, Jacob and Esau. It was by faith that Jacob, when he was old and dying, blessed each of Joseph's sons and bowed in worship as they leaned on his staff. It was by faith that Joseph, when he was about to die, said confidently that the people of Israel would leave Egypt. He even commanded them to take his bones with them when they left. It was by faith that Moses' parents had him hidden for three months when he was born. They saw that God had given them an unusual child, and they were not afraid to disobey the king's command. It was by faith that Moses, when he grew up, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He chose to share the oppression of God's people instead of enjoying the fleeting pleasures of sin. He thought it was better to suffer for the sake of Christ than to own the treasures of Egypt, for he was looking ahead to his great reward. It was by faith that Moses left the land of Egypt. Not fearing the king's anger, he kept right on going, because he kept his eyes on the one who is invisible. It was by faith that Moses commanded the people of Israel to keep the Passover and to sprinkle blood on the doorposts so that the angel of death would not take their firstborn sons. It was by faith that the people of Israel went right through the Red Sea as though they were on dry ground. But when the Egyptians tried to follow, they were all drowned. It was by faith that the people of Israel marched around Jericho for seven days, and the walls came crashing down. It was by faith that Rahab the prostitute was not destroyed with the people in her city who refused to obey God, for she had given a friendly welcome to the spies. How much more do I need to say? It would take too long to recount the stories of the faith of Gideon, Barak, Samson, David, and all the prophets. By faith, these people overthrew kingdoms, ruled with justice, and received what God had promised them. They shut the mouths of lions, quenched the flames of fire, and escaped death by the edge of the sword. Their weakness was turned to strength. They became strong in battle and put whole armies to fight. Women received their loved ones back again from death. Hebrews chapter 1 In the past, God spoke to our ancestors through the prophets at many times and in various ways. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his Son, whom he appointed heir of all things, and through whom also he made the universe. The Son is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being sustaining all things by his powerful word. After he had provided purification for sins, he sat down 
at the right hand of the majesty in heaven. So he became as much superior to the angels as the name he has inherited is superior to theirs. For to which of the angels did God ever say, You are my son, today I have become your father. Or again, I will be his father, and he will be my son. And again, when God brings his firstborn into the world, he says, Let all of God's angels worship him. In speaking of the angels, he says, He makes his angels spirits, and his servants flames of fire. But about the sun, he says, Your throne, O God, will last forever and ever. A scepter of justice will be the scepter of your kingdom. You have loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore, God, your God, has set you above your companions by anointing you with the oil of joy. He also says, In the beginning, Lord, you laid the foundations of the earth, and the heavens are the work of your hands. They will perish, but you remain. They will all wear out like a garment. You will roll them up like a robe, like a garment. They will be changed but you will remain the same, and your years will never end. To which of the angels did God ever say, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet? Are not all angels ministering spirits sent to serve those who will inherit salvation? Hebrews chapter 3, verse 6. But Christ is faithful as the Son over God's house, and we are his house, if indeed we hold firmly to our confidence and the hope in which we glory. Hebrews chapter 3, verses 12 through 13. See to it brothers and sisters, that none of you has a sinful, unbelieving heart that turns away from the living God, but encourage one another daily, as long as it is called today, so that none of you may be hardened by sin's deceitfulness. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 9. There remains, then, a Sabbath rest for the people of God. For anyone who enters God's rest also rests from their works, just as God did from His. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 13. Nothing in all creation is hidden from God's sight. Everything is uncovered and laid bare before the eyes of him to whom we must give account. Hebrews chapter 4 verses 15 through 16 For we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way just as we are, yet he did not sin. Let us approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. Hebrews chapter 6 verses 10 through 12 God is not unjust. He will not forget your work and the love you have shown him 
as you have helped his people and continue to help them. We want each of you to show this same diligence to the very end so that what you hope for may be fully realized. We do not want you to become lazy, but to imitate those who through faith and patience inherit what has been promised. Hebrews chapter 6 verses 19 through 20. We have this hope as an anchor for the soul, firm and secure. It enters the inner sanctuary behind the curtain where our forerunner, Jesus, has entered on our behalf. He has become a high priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 1 Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders us and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance the race that is marked out for us. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 8 Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 2 Fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Hebrews chapter 7 verse 25 Therefore he is able to save completely those who come to God through him, because he always lives to intercede for them. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 23 let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess, for he who promised is faithful. Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 14 Heal me, O Lord, and I shall be healed. Save me, and I shall be saved. For you are my praise. Jeremiah Chapter 33, verse 6 Behold, I will bring it to health and healing, and I will heal them and reveal to them abundance of prosperity and security. 1 Peter, chapter 2, verse 24 He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross, that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. Psalm chapter 41 verse 3 The Lord sustains him on his sickbed. In his illness you restore him to full health. Psalm chapter 147, verse 3. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. Proverbs chapter 17, verse 22. A joyful heart is good medicine, but a crushed spirit dries up the bones. James chapter 5 verse 15 And the prayer of faith will save the one who is sick, and the Lord will raise him up, and if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. 3 John chapter 1 verse 2 Beloved, I pray that all may go well with you 
and that you may be in good health as it goes well with your soul. Isaiah chapter 53 verses 4 through 5 Surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering, yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions, he was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds we are healed. Jeremiah chapter 30 verse 17 But I will restore you to health and heal your wounds, declares the Lord. Revelations chapter 21 verse 4 He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain for the old order of things has passed away. Philippians chapter 4 verse 19 And my God will meet all your needs according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. Exodus chapter 15 verse 26 I am the Lord who heals you. Third John chapter 1 verse 2 Beloved, I pray that all may go well with you and that you may be in good health as it goes well with your soul. Matthew chapter 4 verse 23 And he went throughout all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every disease and every affliction among the people. Isaiah chapter 38 verse 16 O Lord, by these things men live, and in all these is the life of my spirit. O restore me to health and make me live. Psalm chapter 30 verse 5 For his anger is but for a moment, and his favor is for a lifetime. Weeping may tarry for the night, but joy comes with the morning. Psalm chapter 119 verse 50 This is my comfort in my affliction, that your promise gives me life. Isaiah chapter 61 verse 1 The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and opening the prison to those who are bound. Isaiah chapter 66 verse 14 You shall see, and your heart shall rejoice. Your bones shall flourish like the grass, and the hand of the Lord shall be known to his servants, and he shall show his indignation against his enemies. Psalm chapter 147 verses 2 through 5 The Lord built up Jerusalem. He gathers the outcasts of Israel. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. He determines the number of the stars. He gives to all of them their names. Great is our Lord and abundant in power. His understanding 
is beyond measure. Psalm chapter 30, verses 10 through 11. Hear, O Lord, and be merciful to me. O Lord, be my helper. You have turned for me my mourning into dancing. You have loosed my sackcloth and clothed me with gladness. Psalm chapter 34, verses 17 through 18. When the righteous cry for help, the Lord hears and delivers them out of all their troubles. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves the crushed in spirit. Proverbs chapter 23, verse 18. Surely there is a future, and your hope will not be cut off. Lamentations chapter 3, verse 24. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will hope in him. Zechariah chapter 9, verse 12. Return to your stronghold, O prisoners of hope. Today I declare that I will restore to you double. Psalm chapter 71, verse 14. But I will hope continually and will praise you yet more and more. Psalm chapter 33, verse 18. Behold, the eye of the Lord is on those who fear him, on those who hope in his steadfast love. Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 7. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, whose trust is the Lord. Proverbs chapter 20, verse 22. Do not say, I will repay evil. Instead, wait for the Lord, and he will deliver you. Isaiah chapter 30, verse 18. Therefore, the Lord wants to be gracious to you, and therefore he exalts himself to show mercy to you. For the Lord is a God of justice, Blessed are all those who wait for him. Psalm chapter 25, verse 5. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. For you I wait all the day long. Isaiah chapter 51, verse 11. And the ransomed of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with singing. Everlasting joy shall be upon their heads. They shall obtain gladness and joy, and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. Psalm chapter 38, verse 15. But for you, O Lord, do I wait. It is you O Lord my God, who will answer? Psalm chapter 71, verse 5. For you, O Lord, are my hope, my trust, O Lord, from my youth. Psalm chapter 147, verse 11. But the Lord takes pleasure in those who fear him in those who hope in his steadfast love. Psalm chapter 119, verse 114. You are my hiding place and my shield. I hope in your word.
Heavenly Father, as I rest in your presence, I am reminded of your promise in Psalms chapter 23, verses 2 through 3, which says, He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Lord, I surrender myself to your loving care, trusting that you are the source of true restoration and renewal. In the quietness of this moment, I invite your restoration and healing to flow over me like a gentle stream, calming my anxious heart and soothing my weary soul. Just as you lead beside still waters, I ask that you will quiet the storms that rage within me, bringing a sense of peace and tranquility that can only come from your presence. Mighty God, I acknowledge my need for your restoration in every area of my life. Where there is brokenness, I ask for your healing touch. Where there is despair, I ask for your hope to shine brightly. Where there is confusion, I ask for your wisdom to guide me. Help me, Lord, to release all burdens and cares into your loving hands, knowing that you are faithful to carry them for me. Teach me to rest in your grace, to trust in your timing, and to find peace in your unfailing love. In your word, you promise to renew our strength as we wait upon you. So, Lord, I wait upon you now, knowing that you are at work even in the stillness. Renew my strength, O God, that I may rise up with wings like eagles, soaring above the challenges of life and finding my strength in you alone. Thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness and your grace. May your restoration continue to unfold in my life, bringing healing, wholeness, and abundant blessings. In the powerful name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Almighty God, in the quiet moments of rest, I turn to you, the source of all healing and restoration. Your word in Exodus chapter 15, verse 26 says, I am the Lord who heals you. Lord, I find comfort in these words, knowing that your healing power is ever present and available to those who call upon your name. As I rest in your presence, I surrender my worries, fears, and anxieties into your loving hands. I invite your healing touch to flow over every aspect of my being, my body, my mind, and my soul. Just as you calmed the stormy seas with a word, I ask that you would calm the storms within me, bringing peace and tranquility to my troubled heart and mind. Lord, I pray for physical healing wherever it is needed, for your power to heal knows no bounds. I trust in your wisdom and in your perfect timing knowing that you are able to bring about restoration and wholeness in ways that exceed my understanding. I also lift up any emotional or spiritual wounds that I may carry. Heal the brokenness within me and restore my soul to fullness of life. Let your love wash over me like a gentle stream, soothing every ache and filling every emptiness with your presence. In your word, you promise to give rest to the weary and burdened. So Lord, I come to you now, 
weary, and burdened, and I lay those burdens at your feet. Grant me your rest, O Lord, that I may find refuge in you and be renewed in my body, mind, and spirit. Thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness and your steadfast love. May your healing and restoration continue to unfold in my life, bringing glory and honor to your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. Heavenly Father, in this moment of rest, I humbly come before your throne, recognizing your sovereignty and your boundless love for me. Lord, you are the God of restoration, the one who brings beauty from ashes and turns mourning into dancing. I acknowledge that I am in need of your restoration in my life. I surrender every aspect of my being to you, knowing that you are the only one who can truly transform and renew. Father, I ask for your forgiveness for any ways I have strayed from your path, for any sins I have committed knowingly or unknowingly. Wash me clean with the blood of Jesus and purify me from all unrighteousness. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. I pray for restoration in my relationships. Heal any brokenness, mend any wounds, and reconcile any conflicts. Help me to forgive as you have forgiven me, and to love others with the same sacrificial love that you have shown me. I lift up my physical health to you, Lord, for you are the great physician, and I trust in your healing power. Restore my body to full health and vitality, and grant me strength to serve you and others with joy and enthusiasm. Lord, I also pray for restoration in my emotional and mental well-being. You are the God of peace, and your word promises that you will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are stayed on you. Bring peace to my troubled heart and mind, and replace my anxiety and fear with your perfect peace that surpasses all understanding. In every area of my life where there is brokenness, pain, or loss, I invite your restoration. You are the God who makes all things new, and I trust in your faithfulness to fulfill your promises. Help me to surrender control to you, to trust in your timing, and to walk by faith and not by sight. Thank you, Lord, for your unfailing love and your endless grace. I place my hope and my trust in you, knowing that you are able to do immeasurably more than I could ask, think, or imagine. May your name be glorified in my life as you bring about your perfect restoration. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Heavenly Father, I come before you today with a humble heart, recognizing the power of your love and the transformative work of your spirit. Lord, your word teaches us to renew our minds daily, to be transformed by the renewing of our thoughts. I acknowledge that my mind is in need of your renewal and it is often clouded by worldly distractions, anxiety, and negative patterns of thinking. I confess, O oh Lord, that I have allowed the cares of this world to infiltrate my mind, causing me to doubt your goodness, to dwell on fear and anxiety, and to entertain thoughts that are contrary to your truth and the amazing plans you have for me. So in this moment, 
I surrender my mind to you, Lord, asking that you would cleanse it from all unrighteousness and renew it according to your perfect will. Wash away every negative thought, every lie of the enemy, every worry, and every stronghold that hinders me from experiencing the fullness of your love and truth. Fill my mind with your word, O God, that I may meditate on it day and night, allowing it to dwell richly within me and to guide my thoughts and actions. Let your truth be a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path, illuminating the way forward and dispelling the darkness of doubt and confusion. I pray for your Holy Spirit to dwell within me, empowering me to take every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. Help me to guard my mind diligently, to filter out anything that does not align with your word and your promises over my life. Let my thoughts be focused on whatever is true, noble, right, pure, lovely, and admirable. Lord, I ask that you would renew my mind to see myself and others through your eyes of love and grace. Help me to let go of all bitterness, resentment, and unforgiveness, and to cultivate a heart of compassion, kindness, godliness, and forgiveness. In every moment, Lord, may your Spirit be at work within me to renew my mind, transforming me from the inside out and making me into the image of your Son, Jesus Christ. May my thoughts be pleasing to you, my God and my Redeemer, as I seek to live a life that honors and glorifies your holy name. So as I drift off to rest in this moment, may my mind be renewed in your presence. Thank you, Lord, for the gift of renewal and transformation. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Heavenly Father, I lift my heart to you, the God of restoration, the one who makes all things new. Your word tells me in Joel chapter 2, verses 25 through 26, I will restore to you the years that the swarming locust have eaten, the hopper, the destroyer, and the cutter, my great army which I sent among you. You shall eat in plenty and be satisfied, and praise the name of the Lord your God, who has dealt wondrously with you. Lord, I cling to this promise with all my heart, knowing that that your restoration is not only possible, but it is a promise for those who trust in you. You are the God who brings beauty from ashes, who turns mourning into dancing. In every area of my life where I have experienced loss, brokenness, or devastation, I invite your restoration to flow freely. Father, I ask for your forgiveness for any ways I have strayed from your path. Wash me clean with the blood of Jesus and purify me from all unrighteousness. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. In every area of my life where there is brokenness, pain, or loss, I invite your restoration, Lord. You are the God who makes all things new, and I trust in your faithfulness to fulfill your promises. Help me to surrender control to you, to trust in your timing, and to walk by faith and not by sight. Thank you, Lord, for your unfailing love and for your endless grace. I place my hope 
and my trust in you, knowing that you will do immeasurably more than all I could ever ask or imagine. May your name be glorified in my life as you bring about your perfect restoration, healing, and grace. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Almighty and everlasting God, as I close my eyes to rest and seek the refuge of your presence, I come before you with a heart full of gratitude and reverence. In the stillness of this moment, I surrender my burdens, worries, and anxieties into your loving hands, knowing that you are the source of true peace. Heavenly Father, I praise you for your boundless love and unchanging faithfulness. You are the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. Your promises are steadfast and your mercies are new every morning. Tonight, I seek the comfort of your peace that surpasses all understanding, a peace that guards my heart and mind in Christ Jesus. Lord, I acknowledge that life's journey is often filled with challenges and uncertainties, yet I trust in your sovereign plan and infinite wisdom. May your peace, which transcends all understanding, envelop me like a warm embrace, soothing my soul and quieting the storms within. Lord, I invite your Holy Spirit to dwell within me, bringing serenity to the depths of my being. May your presence be the healing to my weary spirit, and may your light dispel any darkness that seeks to invade my thoughts. Gracious God, I lift up my concerns before you, knowing that you care for every detail of my life. Grant me the wisdom to release control and place my trust fully in you. Help me to surrender my fears, insecurities, and uncertainties, laying them at the foot of the cross. Lord Jesus, you promised to give us peace, not as the world gives. I claim that promise over my life tonight. Let your peace reign in my heart, my home, and every aspect of my existence. May it be a peace that transforms, heals, and radiates to those around me. In your mercy, Lord, wherever I lay my head, grant me restful sleep tonight, knowing that your eyes never slumber. As I close my eyes, I entrust myself to your care, confident that your angels stand guard over me. I rest in the assurance that with you by my side, I can face the challenges of tomorrow with strength and peace. All of these things I pray in the name of Jesus, who is the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. Dear Lord, as the night unfolds and the world around me quiets down, I come before you 
with a heart full of hope and gratitude. Your word tells me in Psalm chapter 29, verse 11, that the Lord gives strength to his people. The Lord blesses his people with peace. Tonight, I cling to this promise, trusting that your strength and peace are available to me in abundance. Gracious God, I recognize that life can be filled with challenges, and sometimes the storms seem overwhelming. Yet your word assures me that your strength empowers me to face whatever comes my way. In the midst of uncertainty, I seek the refuge of your peace, a peace that goes beyond my understanding. Heavenly Father, I lay before you my concerns and worries. You know the struggles on my heart, and I trust that you care for me deeply. Help me, Lord, to cast my anxieties on you, for you are my rock and my fortress. May your peace wash over me like a gentle stream, calming the turbulence within. Remind me, Lord, that your word declares in Isaiah chapter 26, verse 3, you will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are steadfast because they trust in you. I pray for steadfast trust and perfect peace to fill my heart. Your peace is not just the absence of trouble, but a deep abiding sense of well-being. I ask for your peace to guard my heart and mind, guiding my thoughts and emotions in alignment with your will. May your peace be a constant companion, reassuring me that I am held in the palm of your loving hand. As I prepare to rest, I place my trust in you. Be the keeper of my dreams and the watcher of my soul through the night. May the assurance of your presence bring sweet repose to my weary spirits knowing that your peace is a gift that transcends the darkness. I thank you, Lord, for your unchanging love and the promise of your peace. In the name of Jesus, my Lord and Savior, I pray. Amen. Heavenly Father, as I pause in the stillness of this night, I am reminded of your promise in Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 through 7, which says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Gracious God, I come before you with a heart full of gratitude for the reassurance found in your word. In a world filled with uncertainties, I choose to place my anxieties, worries, and fears into your loving hands. 
with thanksgiving, I present my requests to you, confident that you hear and respond to the words of your children. Lord, I long for the peace that surpasses all understanding, a peace that can only come from you. As I lay my burdens at your feet, I invite your presence to surround me. May your peace stand guard over my heart and mind, protecting me from the turmoil of the world. Lord, I acknowledge that true tranquility is found in you alone. I surrender my desire for control and lean into your sovereign will. Fill me with the assurance that your presence goes before me, beside me, and behind me, guiding my every step. Father, I pray not only for myself, but for all those who are seeking your peace in the midst of life's storms. May your calming presence be felt in their hearts, bringing rest and hope. Let your peace reign in our lives, transforming our fears into faith and worries into worship. Lord Jesus, be the anchor of my soul, grounding me in the certainty of your love and mercy as I rest in your presence. Grant me a deep and long-lasting peace that transcends the challenges of this world. I thank you, Heavenly Father, for the gift of your peace and the assurance of your unfailing love. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray, amen. Heavenly Father, as I lay down to rest, I remember that your word tells me in Philippians to not worry about anything, but instead pray about everything. Lord, I admit that my mind is often filled with worries and anxieties. Tonight, I bring all these concerns to you, knowing that you care about every detail of my life. I choose to let go of my anxieties and trust in your promise of peace that goes beyond my understanding. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the assurance that as I bring my needs and worries before you, your peace will guard my heart and mind. I surrender my restless thoughts to you, asking for your healing touch to calm the storms within my mind. Lord, I pray for a peace that surpasses all my understanding a peace that settles over my mind like a gentle breeze. I ask for your grace to replace anxious thoughts with thoughts of gratitude, trust, and hope in your unfailing love. God of peace, I invite your Holy Spirit to take residence in all corners of my mind. Bring healing to any wounds, dispel fears, and replace anxiety with a deep sense of your peace. Let your presence be a soothing cover that permeates every corner of my thoughts. As I rest, Lord, I entrust my mind into 
your care. Guard it against the assaults of worry and anxiety. May your peace be like a lighthouse that stands watch over my thoughts, allowing me to sleep soundly and wake up with a renewed mind in the morning, knowing that you are guiding the way and lighting up my path no matter how dark things seem. Thank you, Lord, for your promise of peace and for the love that surpasses all understanding. In the most powerful name, I pray, the name of Jesus. Amen. Mighty God, as I prepare to lay down and rest, I acknowledge your sovereignty and divine presence, and I seek your protection over me through the night. Lord, your word assures me that you are my refuge and fortress, my God in whom I trust. I place my trust in you, recognizing that in your mighty hands I find safety and security. I declare that no weapon formed against me shall prosper, for you are my shield and defender. Remind me, Lord, that you are always with me. Guard my mind from anxious thoughts and my heart from fear. May your peace, which surpasses all understanding, be around me and within me as I surrender every concern and worry into your hands. I rebuke any negative influence or spiritual forces that may seek to disturb my rest. I plead the blood of Jesus over every aspect of my being, my thoughts, my dreams, and my physical well-being. Let your light shine in the darkness, dispelling any lies or shadows of fear or uncertainty. Father, I thank you for being a God who neither slumbers nor sleeps. As I close my eyes, I trust that your watchful eye is upon me and your ears are attentive to my prayers. Cover me with your love and grace, wrapping me in the assurance of your unchanging and everlasting protection. I commit myself into your care, knowing that your plans for me are good and your love for me is unfailing. Grant me a deep and restful sleep, rejuvenating my body, mind, and spirit for the new day ahead. And may I wake up refreshed and renewed, ready to do your will. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Heavenly Father, as I settle myself in your presence, your word reminds me in Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31, that those who wait on you shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Lord, I claim this promise over my life tonight. I acknowledge my dependence on you, the source of all strength and vitality. In moments of weariness, I find refuge in your presence. I cast my burdens and fatigue upon you, trusting that you will provide the energy needed to face each day. Grant me the perseverance to endure challenges and the strength to overcome obstacles. Fill me with the Holy Spirit that I may be empowered to live a life that glorifies you. Strengthen my inner being, renew my mind, and invigorate my body as I rest 
in your care, Lord. I surrender my limitations to you and embrace your limitless strength. Your grace is sufficient for me and your power is made perfect in my weakness. May your strength be my portion, enabling me to rise above circumstances and live in the fullness of your purpose for my life. I declare that your joy is my strength and I receive it even in moments of rest. Lord, I entrust myself into your loving hands. I pray not only for myself, but for others who may be feeling depleted and exhausted. May they also find renewed strength and vitality in you. May your love and power flow through their lives just as your power flows through mine. Thank you, Lord, for being our strength and refuge. I rest in the assurance that with you I can do all things because you strengthen me. I pray all of this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Heavenly Father, as I lay down to rest tonight, I come before your throne with a humble heart, seeking your divine touch for healing. You are the one who can mend broken bodies, soothe troubled minds, and restore tired souls. I surrender myself entirely into your care, knowing that your love surpasses all understanding and your power knows no bounds. In the stillness of this night, I ask for your healing presence to surround me. Pour out your mercy upon me, O Lord, and grant me the strength to endure whatever afflictions I may face. I trust in your promise, for you have declared in your word, in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16, let us approach God's throne of grace with confidence, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. Lord, I approach your throne with confidence knowing that you are eager to bestow your mercy and grace upon your children. May your healing hands touch every part of my being, bringing restoration and wholeness where there is brokenness and pain. May your comforting spirit fill my heart with peace, casting out all fear and anxiety. As I drift off to sleep, I place my trust in you, knowing that you never slumber nor sleep. Watch over me, O Lord, and grant me restful sleep that I may awaken refreshed and renewed, ready to serve you with all my heart, mind, and strength. In the precious name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Heavenly Father, in the quiet moments of this night, I acknowledge your sovereignty and majesty. You are the God of restoration, the one who brings beauty from ashes and turns mourning into dancing. I lift up my heart to you, Lord, and I ask for your divine restoration to flow through every aspect of my life as I sleep tonight. Your word declares in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 10, After you have suffered a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. Father, I cling to this promise with unwavering faith, knowing that you are faithful to fulfill your word. 
I surrender to your will and your perfect timing, trusting that you will bring about restoration in your perfect way and in your perfect time. Lord, I pray for restoration in my relationships. Heal any brokenness, mend any rifts, and bring reconciliation where there is strife. Help me to forgive as you have forgiven me and to extend grace and love to those around me. I also pray for restoration in my mind and spirit. Replace any anxiety, fear, or doubt with your peace that surpasses all understanding. Renew my strength and fill me with hope and joy as I rest in your presence. Father, I lift up to you any areas of my life that need your touch of restoration, whether it be my health, my finances, my dreams, or my spiritual walk. You are the God who makes all things new, and I trust that you will breathe new life into every broken or dormant area of my life. As I lay down to sleep, I surrender all my cares and burdens into your loving hands. Guard my heart and mind throughout the night, and may your peace surround me like a fortress. Grant me sweet dreams and restful sleep, knowing that you are with me always, guiding me and leading me into your perfect will. Thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness and your unfailing love. May your restoration flow abundantly in my life, bringing glory and honor to your name. In the mighty and powerful name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Heavenly Father, in the shelter of your wings, I find refuge and strength. As I come before you in prayer, I am reminded of your unwavering love and boundless grace. You are my fortress, my stronghold, and my healer. I lift my voice to you, O Lord, seeking your divine protection and healing over every aspect of my life. Your word declares in Psalm chapter 23, verses 1 through 4, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his namesake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Lord, I cling to the truth of your word, knowing that you are my shepherd who watches over me with tender care. Lead me beside still waters, O Lord, and restore my soul. Heal any wounds, both seen and unseen, that afflict my body, my mind, or spirit. Guard me against the schemes of the enemy and shield me from harm and danger. I pray for your protection over my physical health. Guard me against any illness and disease and strengthen my body to withstand any trials or challenges that may come my way. Remind me, O Lord, that even if the weapon is formed, it shall not prosper. Father, I also lift up to you my emotional and mental well-being. Heal any wounds or traumas that have left scars on my heart and mind. Bring peace 
to any areas of anxiety, fear, or doubt, and replace them with your perfect love that casts out all fear. As I rest tonight, I pray for your peace to envelop me like a warm blanket, calming every fear and soothing every worry. May your presence be a shield around me, protecting me from the attacks of the enemy. Grant me restful sleep, knowing that you are watching over me and keeping me safe in your arms. Thank you, Lord, for your unfailing love and your constant protection. May your healing power flow abundantly in my life bringing glory and honor to your name. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Almighty God, as I come before your throne of grace, I am overwhelmed by your faithfulness. You are the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, and your promises endure forever. In times of uncertainty and doubt, I find peace in your unchanging character and steadfast love. I lift my voice to you, O Lord, praising you for your faithfulness that sustains me through every trial and triumph. Your word declares in Lamentations chapter 3 verses 22 through 23. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is His faithfulness. Lord, I cling to the truth of Your Word, knowing that Your love never fails and Your mercies are endless. Your faithfulness is my anchor in the storms of life and your grace is my strength in times of weakness. I am grateful for your faithfulness that has carried me through every season of life, never leaving me nor forsaking me. Father, I thank you for your faithfulness in the past as you have proven yourself faithful time and time again. You have provided for my needs protected me from harm, and guided me through the darkest valleys. You have turned my mourning into dancing, my sorrow into joy, and ashes into beauty. Your faithfulness has been my rock and my fortress, my refuge and strength. Lord, I surrender my present circumstances into your faithful hands, trusting that you are working all things together for my good. Help me to walk by faith and not by sight, knowing that your plans for me are good, pleasing, and perfect. Give me the courage to step out in faith, knowing that you are always by my side, leading and guiding me. Father, I also pray for your faithfulness in the future, knowing that your promises are sure and your word never returns void. Help me to trust in your unfailing love, even when I cannot see the way forward. Give me the patience to wait upon you, knowing that your timing is perfect and your purposes will prevail. As I rest tonight, I pray for your faithfulness to overshadow me like a canopy of love, covering me with your peace and assurance. May your presence be my constant companion, reminding me of your faithfulness that endures forever. Thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness that never wavers. May your name be glorified now and forever. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. 
Almighty God, I lay before you my heart and soul, seeking your divine healing over my mind. You are the God who knows every thought, every worry, and every struggle that weighs heavy on my spirit. I surrender them all to you, trusting in your promise to bring healing and wholeness. Your word declares in Romans chapter 12, verse 2, Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Lord, I long to experience the transformative power of your spirit as you renew my mind. Help me to break free from the patterns of this world that ensnare me and to embrace your truth and wisdom. Heal any wounds or traumas that have left scars on my mind and spirit and replace them with your peace and restoration. Father, I pray that you would remove any anxious thoughts, doubts, or fears that plague my mind. Replace them with your perfect peace that surpasses all understanding. Strengthen me to stand firm on your promises, knowing that you are with me always, guiding me through every trial and tribulation. I also lift up to you any mental illnesses or disorders that I may be struggling with. You are the God who can heal all things, and I trust in your power to bring healing and relief. Surround me with your love and comfort, and grant me the courage to seek help and support from resources and others that you have placed in my life. Lord, I surrender my mind to you completely, asking that you would align my thoughts with your will and purpose for my life. Help me to fix my eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of my faith, and to trust in your sovereign plan for me, even when I cannot see the way forward. As I rest tonight, I pray for your peace to guard my heart and mind. May your presence be like a soothing remedy, calming every anxious thought and filling me with your joy and hope. Grant me restful sleep, knowing that you are watching over me and keeping me safe in your arms. Thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness and your steadfast love. May your healing power flow abundantly over my mind. May I wake up refreshed and renewed and ready to reflect who you are in all of my actions, my ways, and all of my thoughts. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Heavenly Father, as I lay down to rest my body and mind, I come before your loving presence to seek your peace and protection. I thank you for the gift of this day and all the blessings you have bestowed upon me. Now I surrender all my worries, anxieties, and fears into your caring hands, knowing that you are in control and that you watch over me. Lord. As I close my eyes, I invite your Holy Spirit to come and fill me with your peace. Let your gentle presence envelop me, calming my restless soul and bringing tranquility to my heart. Help me to cast aside any thoughts that disturb my mind and replace them with thoughts 
of your goodness and love. As the Bible says in Psalm 4.8, In peace I will both lie down and sleep, for you alone, O Lord, make me dwell in safety. I trust in your unfailing love, protection, and care, and I declare that no harm or evil can come near me as I sleep in your embrace. And Father, I also want to lift up those in need of prayer tonight. I pray for those who are suffering, for the lonely, the sick, the grieving, and the oppressed. May your comfort be upon them, as your comfort is also on me. Thank you, Lord, for the gift of sleep. I recognize that it is a reflection of your rest after the creation of the world. As I enter this period of rest, I release any burdens I may be carrying and place my trust fully in you. I choose to rely on your strength, knowing that your grace is sufficient for me. In the name of Jesus Christ, I bind any negative influences or spiritual attacks that may try to disturb my sleep. By the authority of his name, I declare peace and protection over my mind, my dreams, and my physical body. As I surrender to the gentle embrace of sleep, I pray that you will speak to me in the stillness of the night. May your voice guide me, and may your wisdom enlighten my heart. Speak to me through dreams and visions, giving me clarity and understanding in all areas of my life. I pray that as I wake up, refreshed and renewed, I will continue to walk in your ways and be a light to others. Let your love shine through me, touching the lives of those around me and drawing them closer to you. Thank you, gracious Father, for hearing my prayer. I trust in your promises, and I believe that you will grant me a peaceful and deep sleep tonight. In your holy and precious name I pray, Amen. Heavenly Father, as this day draws to a close, I'm here before you with a heart overflowing with gratitude and reverence. I thank you for the countless blessings you have bestowed upon me throughout this day and throughout my life. Your love and faithfulness have sustained me, and I am in awe of your unfailing goodness. Lord, I recognize that sleep is a gift from you, a time of rest and rejuvenation for my body, mind, and spirit. Tonight, I ask for your special touch upon my sleep, that it may be filled with your peace, comfort, and tranquility. I surrender all my worries, anxieties, and cares to you, knowing that you care for me and desire to carry my burdens. In your word, you assure us, come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. So tonight, I come to you with a weary soul, seeking your divine rest. I lay down my struggles and fears, my doubts and uncertainties, and I ask that you replace them with the assurance of your presence and the peace that surpasses all understanding. As I lay down, I pray that you will surround me with your protective angels guarding my sleep from any harm or disturbance. Shield me from the schemes of the enemy, for I know that in your shelter 
I find refuge and safety. And Lord, I bring before you those who find it difficult to sleep tonight, just as you do to me. May your tender mercy embrace them, granting them the comfort and peace they need. As I rest, I also intercede for them, asking for your healing touch and peace to wash over their lives, as your peace is also washing over mine. Lord Jesus, you are the Prince of Peace and your presence begins to calm even the stormiest of seas. I invite you to be with me in my sleep, guiding my dreams and thoughts. Let your light dispel any darkness within me and bring clarity to my mind. I pray that as I rest, your spirit will speak to my heart, revealing your truths and leading me on the path of righteousness. Grant me discernment and wisdom that I may understand your will for my life and make choices that honor and glorify you. Father, I repent of any sin or disobedience in my life. Forgive me and cleanse me from all unrighteousness so that my conscience may be clear as I keep your promise. In this world of chaos and noise, I long for moments of silence to hear your still yet powerful voice. So I ask that you hush the distractions and worries that seek to steal my peace. Help me to be attentive to your voice and to surrender to your divine will. As I close my eyes, I entrust my loved ones into your care. Watch over them, protect them, and draw them closer to you. May your love surround them as your love surrounds me, and may your grace cover me, keeping me safe throughout the night. Thank you, dear Lord, for hearing my prayer and for being the faithful, loving God that you are. May your name be praised and glorified both now and forever. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Gracious and loving Father, as this day comes to a close, I pause to acknowledge your presence in my life. I am grateful for the gift of another day, for the breath in my lungs, and for the countless blessings you have bestowed upon me. I thank you for your unfailing love and grace, which sustains me through every season of life. As I prepare to rest, I humbly come before you, recognizing that you are the giver of all good things, including peaceful sleep. I ask for your divine touch upon my body, mind, and soul, that as I lay down to sleep, I may find perfect peace and comfort in your embrace. Lord, in your word, you remind us that you never slumber nor sleep, and your watchful eye is upon us day and night. I take comfort in knowing that you are constantly present, watching over me and caring for my every need. I trust in your divine protection and I surrender any fears or worries to you, knowing that your love casts out all fear. In the quietness of this night, I pray for those who are also struggling with sleep. May your tender mercies reach out to them, providing them rest and hope in their times of need, as you are doing for me. Heavenly Father, I ask that you send your angels to stand guard around me as I sleep. Protect my mind from any negative thoughts or anxieties, 
and let your peace be a fortress around me. Shield me from any spiritual attacks and let your light pierce through any darkness that may try to invade my sleep. As I rest, I pray that you will minister to my dreams. Speak to me in the stillness of the night and reveal your truths to me. Give me insight and understanding that I may grow in my knowledge of you and your word. Lord, I acknowledge that my strength and wisdom come from you alone. Apart from you, I can do nothing. As I rest, I surrender my plans, my desires, and my future into your capable hands. May your will be done in my life, and may I walk in obedience to your commands. Father, I lift up my loved ones to you. Watch over them as they sleep, and grant them your peace. Protect them from harm, and draw them near ever closer to you. May your love be evident in their lives, and may they experience your presence in profound ways. Thank you, Lord, for the gift of sleep, for the opportunity to rest in your presence. I trust in your faithfulness and your unchanging love. As I close my eyes, I hold on to your promises, knowing that you are with me always, guiding and protecting me. I pray all these things in the name of Jesus Christ, my Savior and Redeemer. Amen. Loving Father, as this day comes to a close, I pause to acknowledge your presence in my life. I am grateful for the gift of another day, for the breath in my lungs, and for the countless blessings you have bestowed upon me. Thank you for your unfailing love and grace, which sustains me through every season of life. As I prepare to rest, I humbly come before you, acknowledging that you are the giver of all good things, including peaceful sleep. I ask for your divine touch upon my mind, body, and soul, that as I lay down to sleep, I may find perfect peace and comfort in your embrace. In your word, you remind us of your promise in Psalm 4.8, which says, In peace I will both lie down and sleep, for you alone, O Lord, make me dwell in safety. So my Lord, I take comfort in knowing that you are my refuge and shelter, the one who watches over me and keeps me safe. I trust in your divine protection, and I surrender any fears or worries to you, knowing that your perfect love casts out all fear. Heavenly Father, I ask that your angels Stand guard around me as I sleep. Protect my mind from any negative thoughts or anxieties. And let your peace be a fortress around me. Shield me from any spiritual attacks. And let your light pierce through any darkness that may try to invade my sleep. As I rest, speak to me in the stillness of the night and reveal your truths to me. Give me insight, understanding, and an increase in wisdom that I may grow in my knowledge of you and your word. Lord, I acknowledge that my strength and my might come from you alone. So as I rest, I surrender my plans, my desires, and my future into your capable hands. May your will be done in my life.
and may I walk in obedience to your commands. Thank you, Lord, for this gift of sleep and for the opportunity to rest in your presence. May I feel your healing power tonight in profound ways. As I close my eyes, I hold on to your promises, knowing that you are with me always, guiding me and protecting me. I pray all these things in the name of Jesus Christ, my Savior and Redeemer. Amen. Heavenly Father, as I prepare to rest my weary body and soul, I come before your throne of grace with a heart full of thankfulness and hope. I thank you for the gift of life and for your abundant blessings that enrich every aspect of my being. Lord, I acknowledge that without you, I am nothing, but with you, all things are possible. Tonight, I seek your divine favor and guidance as I lay down to sleep. I pray for peaceful rest, free from the worries and anxieties that may try to steal my peace. Your word in Philippians 4, 6 through 7 reminds me, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. I surrender all my concerns into your hands, trusting that you will fill my heart with your peace that surpasses all understanding. Lord, I long for your success in every area of my life. Your word promises in Jeremiah 29:11, for I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. I choose to put my trust in your plans and purposes, knowing that you have my best interests at heart. As I rest, I pray for your divine favor to rest upon me. Open doors that no one can shut, and shut doors that may lead me astray from your will. Align my desires with your desires, and may the desires of my heart be in line with your perfect will for my life. Lord, I pray for your wisdom and discernment in every decision I make. Guide me in my career, my relationships, and my endeavors. Give me the wisdom to make choices that honor you and bring glory to your name. I also pray for protection over my mind and my heart. Guard me against negative influences and distractions that may hinder my progress. Let your word be a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path, leading me in the way of righteousness. Father, as I sleep, I ask that you grant me dreams and visions that reveal your divine direction for my life. Speak to me in the stillness of the night, and grant me clarity, faith, and understanding of your plans for me. Thank you, Lord, for the assurance of your presence with me at all times. I rest in the knowledge that you never sleep nor slumber, and that you are always working for my good. May your peace surround me as I sleep and may your providence guide me as I wake. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Gracious and merciful God, as this day draws to a close, I bow before your majesty with a heart 
full of gratitude and reverence. You are the creator of all things, the Alpha and the Omega. I am humbled by your boundless love and grace. Thank you for the blessings that you have showered upon me, for the gift of life, and for your constant presence in every moment of my journey. Tonight, I seek your divine favor and guidance as I prepare to rest my body and mind. Your word in Psalm 127 2 reminds me, it is vain that you rise up early and go late to rest, eating the bread of anxious toil, for he gives to his beloved sleep. I release all my worries and anxieties into your capable hands, knowing that you watch over me, and I find rest in your care. Loving Father, I long for a deep and renewing sleep in your presence. In the stillness of the night, may your peace surround me like a comforting embrace. Help me to let go of the concerns that weigh heavily on my heart and to surrender them to you. May your peace guard my heart and mind throughout the night so I may awaken refreshed and ready to face each new day with faith and courage. Lord, I pray for protection over my sleep. I declare your promise in Psalm 4.8. In peace I will both lie down and sleep. For you alone, O Lord, make me dwell in safety. I trust in your divine protection, knowing that no harm can befall me under your watchful eye. As I rest, I also pray for those who are facing hardships and difficulties. Surround them with your love and strength, comforting them in their times of need. May they find rest in you, knowing that you are their refuge and fortress in times of trouble. Father, I ask for your guidance and direction in my life. Illuminate my path and lead me on the path of righteousness. Give me clarity of mind and discernment so that I may make decisions that align with your will and your purpose for my life. In this quiet moment, I invite your Holy Spirit to minister to my dreams. Speak to me, Lord. Show me your way and reveal your truths to me. May your word be a lamp to my feet and a light to my path, guiding me in every aspect of my life. Thank you, dear Lord, for the gift of sleep, for this opportunity to rest in your presence is something I cherish every day. I entrust myself and my loved ones into your care, knowing that you are faithful and true. As I close my eyes, I embrace the peace that comes from knowing that you are with me always. May your presence surround me like a protective shield, granting me a deep and renewing sleep that restores my body, mind, and spirit in the most powerful name above all names, the name of Jesus Christ, my Savior and Redeemer, I pray. Amen. Gracious and loving Father, as I come before you in this sacred moment, I am humbled by the depth of your love and the closeness of your presence. Your word in Psalm 139 
beautifully declares, O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from afar. Lord, I am grateful that you know me intimately, and in this knowledge I find both peace and security. You are the God who is ever-present, and I take refuge in the assurance that there is nowhere I can go where your spirit is not with me. Your constant companionship brings a peace that surpasses all understanding. In the quietness of this moment, I invite your spirit to surround me, soothing any restlessness and calming my anxieties. Your words in Psalm remind us, if I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me. Lord, I rest in the knowledge that you are with me in every corner of my existence, guiding and holding me with your loving hand. As I prepare to lay down and rest, I meditate on the profound truth expressed in your word, which says, I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. My soul knows it very well. In acknowledging your intricate design and purpose for my life, I find peace, for I am under the care of the Creator of the universe. Lord, in the stillness of this night, I surrender my cares and concerns to you. Your understanding is infinite, and I trust that you see the depths of my heart. As it says in Psalms, search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts and see if there be any grievous way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. So lead me, Lord, in the path of everlasting peace. I thank you, Heavenly Father, for your unending love and the reassurance that in your presence I find rest for my soul. May your peace which surpasses all understanding, guard my heart and my mind as I drift off into a peaceful and rejuvenating sleep. In the powerful name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Heavenly Father, as the night unfolds and the world around me grows quiet, I turn to you, my source of strength and peace. Your word in Psalm chapter 4, verse 8, resonates in my heart. In peace I will lie down and sleep, for you alone, Lord, make me dwell in safety. Mighty God, I find comfort in the knowledge that my safety and rest are found in you alone. At the close of this day, I bring before you the weariness of my body and the restlessness of my mind. Your invitation in Matthew chapter 11, verse 28, is soothing to my soul, which says, Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. In this moment, I come to you, laying down the burdens that weigh on me, seeking the rest that only you 
can provide. Heavenly Father, you are the God of all comfort, and I lean on your promise from Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31. But they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. I wait on you, Lord, to renew my strength as I prepare to rest. I cast my anxieties upon you, for in your word it says, Cast all your anxieties on him, because he cares for you. I release the concerns of the day into your capable hands, trusting that you care for every detail of my life. Lord, I acknowledge that you are the giver of good gifts. As stated in James, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights. I thank you, Lord, for the gift of rest and the rejuvenation that comes from sleep. May I receive this gift with a grateful heart. So, Lord, in the stillness of this night, I seek your presence and I surrender all to you. Your word assures me that you make known to me the path of life. In your presence, there is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. May your presence surround me, bringing joy and tranquility as I surrender to the embrace of a peaceful sleep. I pray this in the name of Jesus, my Savior and Redeemer. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, as I come before you in this moment, I am grateful for the peace and comfort that your presence brings. Lord, you are the source of all strength, and I humbly seek your guidance and protection as I lay down to rest. Your word reminds us in Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 through 7. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Lord, I lift up to you all the worries and anxieties that may be weighing on my heart. In your infinite love, replace my fears with the peace that surpasses understanding. Let your calming presence envelop me as I prepare for a restful night's sleep. I surrender all my concerns to you, knowing that you are in control of every situation. Lord, help me to release the burdens of this day and to find rest in your love. In Psalms, I am reminded that the Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. You make me lie down in green pastures. You lead me beside quiet waters. You refresh my soul. You guide me along the right path for your name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. So mighty God, I trust in your faithfulness 
and your promises. Grant me the grace to cast all my anxieties on you, for you care for me. As I close my eyes and drift off into sleep, I choose to rest in the assurance of your love and protection. May my sleep be deep and undisturbed, knowing that you are watching over me. I pray all these things in the name of Jesus, the Prince of Peace. Amen. Gracious and mighty God, in the quiet moments of this night, I come before you with a heart full of gratitude and reverence. Lord, you are the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. Your love surrounds me, and I seek refuge in your presence as I navigate the challenges and uncertainties of life. Your word teaches us to come to you, all of us who are weary and burdened, and you will give us rest, for you are gentle and humble in heart, and we will find rest for our souls in you. Lord, I surrender to you all of my worries, fears, and burdens. You are the Prince of Peace, and I ask for your peace to fill my heart and mind. Your promise in Isaiah assures us you will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are steadfast because they trust in you. As I lay down to rest, I place my trust in you, acknowledging that you are in control of all things. Your sovereignty brings comfort and assurance. In Psalms, we are reminded of your goodness with these words that say, He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will never slumber nor sleep. Lord, I bring before you not only my own concerns, but also those of my loved ones. May your peace extend to each member of my family and friends. May you cover us with your protective wings and guard us against any anxiety or fear. Your word encourages us in Philippians. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. In this moment of prayer and being in your presence, I release control and surrender to your will. Lord, your plans are higher and your ways are perfect. May your Holy Spirit guide me into a deep and restful sleep, free from anxious thoughts. I cling to the promise in Psalms that says, I will praise the Lord who counsels me. Even at night, my heart instructs me. Thank you, Lord, for the gift of rest and the assurance of your unwavering love. I entrust myself into your hands, knowing that you are the good shepherd who watches over your flock. In the name of Jesus, I pray, amen. Heavenly Father, in the quiet of this moment, I come before your throne humbled by your grace and in awe of your boundless love. You are the great physician, the one who holds the power to heal and restore. As I rest in your presence, I surrender all my burdens, 
my fears, and my worries to you. Lord, I thank you for the gift of life, for the breath that fills my lungs, and for the beating of my heart. Even in the midst of pain and uncertainty, I find rest in your promises, knowing that you are with me every step of the way. Your word assures me that by your wounds I am healed. I cling to this truth, trusting in your unfailing love to encompass me. Father, I ask for your healing touch to be upon my body, mind, and spirit. Let your gentle hands soothe every ache, every ailment, and every distressing thought. Pour out your peace upon me like a refreshing stream, washing away all anxiety and filling me with your divine tranquility. Lord, I also pray for wisdom and discernment for those who are caring for me. Guide their hands and hearts. Grant them compassion, strength, and peace. Bless them, Lord, as they are vessels of your mercy and instruments of your grace. As I rest in your presence, Lord, I surrender my will to yours. Help me to trust in your timing, knowing that you make all things beautiful in your perfect time. Grant me the patience to endure, the faith to believe, and the hope to persevere through every trial. May your healing power flow through every fiber of my being, restoring me to wholeness and vitality. Let your light shine brightly within me, illuminating the path of healing and renewal. May my life be a testament to your faithfulness and a beacon of your love to all who encounter me. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Mighty God, I come before you with a heart full of gratitude and reverence, knowing that you are the source of all healing and restoration. Your word tells me in Psalm chapter 30, verse 2, Lord my God, I called to you for help, and you healed me. I cling to this promise, trusting in your faithfulness to answer the cry of my heart. Lord, as I rest in your presence, I surrender all my fears and anxieties unto you. You are my refuge and strength, a constant presence in times of trouble. I take comfort in knowing that you are always near, guiding me with your steadfast love and grace. I ask for your healing touch to be upon my body, mind, and soul. Let your divine power flow through me, bringing restoration to every part of my being. Like the woman who reached out and touched the hem of your garment, Lord, I reach out to you in faith, believing that your touch will bring healing and wholeness to my life. Help me to trust in your perfect timing, knowing that you make all things beautiful in your time. May my life, through every circumstance, be a testimony to your goodness and grace, a living example of your miraculous power at work. Use me, Lord, to bring glory to your name and to point others to the source of true healing and hope. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Heavenly Father, I come before you with a heart heavy with the burdens of the mind. In this moment of rest, as I drift off into sleep, I seek your healing touch to envelop my thoughts and emotions. 
You are the God of peace who surpasses all understanding, and I invite your calming presence to dwell within me. Lord, you know me more than I know myself. You see the deepest parts of my mind. You see every anxious thought, every fear, and every doubt that weighs heavy upon my soul. Yet your word assures me that you have not given me a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Help me to hold on to this truth and walk in the freedom that your love provides. I surrender my worries and uncertainties to you, knowing that you are the ultimate source of healing and restoration. I ask for your peace to wash over my mind like a gentle wave, soothing every troubled thought and bringing clarity to my thoughts. Father, I pray for your guidance and wisdom to navigate the challenges that are before me. Help me to discern your voice amidst the noise of the world and to trust in your unfailing love to lead me on the path of righteousness. I rebuke every spirit of anxiety, depression, and confusion in the mighty name of Jesus. You have given me authority over all the power of the enemy, and I stand firm in your promises, knowing that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Fill me with your Holy Spirit, giving me power to cast aside every thought that exalts itself against the knowledge of you, and to take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. May your peace, which transcends all understanding, guard my heart and my mind in Christ Jesus. Renew my mind, O Lord. Let all illnesses and anxieties fall by the wayside and transform me by the renewing of my thoughts. In the powerful name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Heavenly Father, as I enter into this sacred moment of rest, I am reminded of your promise in Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 14, which says, Heal me, Lord, and I will be healed. Save me, and I will be saved. For you are the one I praise. Lord, I lift up my faith to you, trusting in your unfailing love and boundless mercy. You are the great healer, the one who heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. I come before you with a heart that longs for healing, healing for my body, mind, and spirit. I lay before you all my pain, all my worries, and all my fears, knowing that you are able to bring comfort and restoration. Lord, I ask for your healing touch to be upon every part of my being. Let your divine presence surround me like a warm embrace, bringing peace to my troubled soul and strength to my weary body. Fill me up with your spirit and your power, renewing my strength and revitalizing my spirit. I pray for wisdom and discernment in these moments, Lord. I ask that you would send my way encouragement and inspiration, Lord. I posture my heart to trust in your perfect timing, knowing that your ways are higher than my ways and your thoughts are higher than my thoughts. May I have the strength to persevere through every trial and path you are leading me down. Let your light shine brightly within me, illuminating the path of healing and wholeness. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.
loving Father, in the quiet moments as I rest, I am enveloped by your comforting presence, knowing that you are the divine healer who tenderly cares for your children. Your word in Psalm chapter 23, verses 1 through 3, says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. Lord, in this moment, I ask for your restoration and healing touch over my soul. I surrender all my burdens and anxieties into your capable hands. You are the one who brings peace that transcends all understanding, and I invite your peace to fill every corner of my being. Like a gentle breeze that soothes the weary traveler, may your presence calm my restless heart and bring serenity to my mind. Father, I ask for your healing touch to flow through me, washing away every pain, every illness, and every worry. Let your grace be like a healing remedy, soothing my body, mind, and spirit. May your love penetrate every fiber of my being, bringing renewal and strength. As I rest in your embrace, help me to release all fear and doubt, trusting in your provision and promises, knowing that you hold me securely in your arms. Grant me faith to trust in your goodness and to believe in your promises. May your peace reign supreme in my heart, guarding me against all anxiety and fear. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Dear Heavenly Father, as I come before your presence, I am grateful for the gift of another day and the opportunity to seek your comfort and healing. Lord, I lift up to you the weariness and burdens that I carry, and I ask for your divine touch to bring deep and restful sleep. In this quiet moment, I surrender my anxieties, fears, and uncertainties into your loving hands. Your word reminds me that you are the God who neither slumbers nor sleeps, and I find peace in the assurance that you watch over me throughout the night. I pray for the healing touch of your grace to surround every part of my being, mind, body, and soul. May your soothing presence bring peace to my troubled thoughts and bring calmness to my restless spirit. I declare your promises of healing over my life, trusting in your faithfulness to restore and renew. Lord, I invite your Holy Spirit to fill my dreams with visions of your love and mercy. May your Spirit stand guard around me, providing a hedge of protection as I rest in your care. I trust and believe that you are the great physician, the one who heals all wounds and ailments. I ask for your healing touch to mend any brokenness within me, physically, emotionally, and spiritually. May your power flow through every cell and fiber of my being, bringing restoration and wholeness. I also lift up those who are in need of healing around me, whether they are family, friends, or acquaintances. I ask for your mercy to touch their lives and bring forth miracles of recovery and redemption. Lord, I thank you for the promise of a new day that awaits me when I awaken. May I rise with a heart full of gratitude for your goodness and a renewed sense 
of purpose in serving you. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Heavenly Father, as I lay down to rest, I come before you with a heart that seeks your strength and refuge. Your word in Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 through 30 resonates in my spirit, where Jesus says, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Lord, I am grateful for the invitation to come to you in my weariness. I surrender my burdens, struggles, and challenges of the day at the foot of the cross. Your promise of rest for my soul is a soothing remedy to my spirit, and I receive it with gratitude. In the quiet moments of this night, I seek your strength, which surpasses my own. Your word tells me that in my weakness, your power is made perfect. I acknowledge my limitations, knowing that it is through your grace that I find strength. Strengthen me, O Lord, as I rest and renew my spirit for the tasks that lie ahead. I am mindful of the battles that may have been fought today, both seen and unseen. As I close my eyes, I place my trust in your protective hand. Guard my mind from anxious thoughts and my heart from fear. Your strength is my shield, and in you I find courage to face each day. May the peace that surpasses all understanding surround me as I sleep. Your presence is my fortress, and I take refuge in the shadow of your wings. Be my guide through the night, leading me in the path of righteousness. Lord, I am grateful for the assurance that your strength is more than enough for me. In my vulnerability, I find security in your unfailing love. As I rest, may the power of your word and the assurance of your presence be a source of strength and peace. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Heavenly Father, as I lay down to rest tonight, I acknowledge that you are the Alpha and the Omega, the Creator of all things, and I am humbled by the privilege to be with you in this moment. Lord, I thank you for the gift of this day, for the breath in my lungs, and for the countless blessings that you have bestowed upon me. In the quiet moments of this night, I seek your presence and invite your spirit to fill my room with your peace. Gracious God, I acknowledge that life can be filled with challenges and uncertainties. Yet, I take comfort in your promise that you are always with me, guiding my steps and watching over me. Your word assures me that you are a God of peace, and I cast all my anxieties and worries upon you, knowing that you care for me as I prepare to drift off into a deep sleep. I ask for your divine protection over my mind, body, and spirit. Guard my thoughts and dreams 
shielding them from anything that is not of you. May your peace, which surpasses all understanding, be placed on me like a warm and comforting blanket. Lord, I surrender my plans and desires to your will. May your providence guide the course of my life. Help me to trust in your timing and to walk in faith, knowing that you have a purpose for every season and circumstance. I am grateful for the promise of a new day that your mercies bring. May I wake up refreshed and renewed, ready to face whatever challenges may come my way, knowing that I do so with you by my side. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Mighty God, in the stillness of this moment, I come before you with a heart open to your presence. In the quietness of this night, I seek the depths of your love and the assurance of your peace. Your word tells me that you neither slumber nor sleep, and I find comfort in knowing that I rest under the watchful gaze of the Almighty. Lord, I thank you for the gifts of this day, for the moments of joy and the challenges as well. As I surrender my weariness to you, I invite your spirit to surround me with the serenity that can only come from your presence. Let your peace be a soothing remedy to my soul, calming every anxious thought and quieting every restless part of my being. Lord, as I settle down, I reflect on your faithfulness throughout the ages. You are the God who never changes, whose promises endure forever. I trust in your unfailing love and the security that comes from being held in your mighty hands. I ask for your guidance in my dreams, Lord. May the visions of this night be reflections of your wisdom and grace. Let your spirit speak to my heart, revealing any areas where I need your guidance or correction. May the dreams be a source of inspiration and encouragement, preparing me for the challenges and opportunities of the days to come. I surrender my burdens and concerns to you, Lord, as I release the weight of this day, I choose to trust in your providence and to find my rest in your unfailing love. As I close my eyes, I do so with gratitude for your constant presence. May your love and protection stand guard around me, and may I wake up in the morning renewed and refreshed, ready to face a new day in your grace. In the most powerful name, the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Gracious and loving Father, as I surrender to the quiet embrace of the night, I come before you with a heart full of gratitude and awe. You are the God of infinite mercy, the shepherd who watches over your flock with unwavering love. I seek your presence, Lord, as I prepare to rest, knowing that in you I find my refuge and strength. Your promises, O oh Lord, are a beacon of hope, and I trust in your unchanging character and the promises you have declared over my life. Lord, as I lay down, I ask for the covering of your protection and the remedy of your presence. Your word assures me 
that you are my shield and fortress, a stronghold in times of trouble. I place my trust in you, asking you to guard my mind from anxious thoughts and my heart from fear, for in you I find perfect peace. Surround me, O Lord, with your presence. Create a hedge of protection around me, guarding against any spiritual forces that may seek to disturb my rest. I declare the power of the blood of Jesus over my sleep, knowing that it is a shield against any darkness. I invite your Holy Spirit to fill this space with the soothing remedy of your presence. May your peace be tangible, settling upon me like a gentle dove. Quiet the storms within my soul and bring tranquility to the deepest parts of my being. Your presence is my sanctuary and I rest assured that in you I am safe. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke any attacks of the enemy against my mind, body, or spirit. I declare victory in Christ and claim the promise of deep and restful sleep. Your word says that you give your beloved sleep, and I receive this gift with gratitude. With my eyes closed, I rest with confidence in your love and trust in your provision. May I wake up in the morning with a heart filled with praise, ready to embrace the new day that you have ordained. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Dear Heavenly Father, I come before you with a humble heart, seeking your comforting presence in the midst of my weariness and the challenges that weigh upon me. You, Lord, are the great healer, the one who mends broken hearts and brings restoration to weary souls. In your loving arms, I find rest and strength. Lord, I lay before you the burdens that have kept me awake at night, robbing me of the restful sleep you intend for your children. I surrender my anxieties, fears, troubles, and anything else, seen or unseen, knowing that your peace surpasses all understanding. As I rest in your promises, I trust you are watching over me and guiding my steps. In the quiet moments before rest, I invite your calming presence to fill my room. May your soothing touch ease any physical or emotional pain, granting me the healing I so desperately need. Your word declares in Psalms, he heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. I cling to this promise, trusting that your love is a healing cover for my soul. Father, I ask for your divine intervention in my sleep. Help me release the burdens of the day, casting my cares upon you, for you care for me. Grant me the peace that transcends all understanding, guarding my heart and mind in Christ Jesus. May your angels watch over me, and your presence be with me, bringing comfort and protection as I rest in your unfailing love. 
I pray for restoration and rejuvenation during the night hours. May your healing power flow through my body, mind, and spirit, renewing me for the challenges of a new day. I surrender my worries and concerns to you, knowing that your plans for me are good, filled with hope and a future. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for being my refuge and strength. I trust in your mercy and grace, believing that you are at work in my life, bringing healing and rest according to your perfect will. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Gracious and loving Father, as I approach you in prayer, I lift up my weariness and fatigue, knowing that you are the source of true rest and renewal. Your word assures me in Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Lord, I acknowledge this invitation and lay before you the exhaustion that weighs heavy on my soul. I surrender my need for control and cast my cares upon you, for you are the one who sustains me. In the stillness of this night, I seek your comforting presence to envelop me. Let your peace that passes all understanding be with me and guard my heart. I trust in your promise that you never slumber nor sleep, watching over me with unwavering love and care. Father, I ask for your healing touch to soothe any physical or emotional pain that hinders my ability to find peaceful rest. You are the divine physician, and I trust in your ability to bring wholeness to every aspect of my being. Your word declares in Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 17, but I will restore to you health and heal your wounds. And I hold on to this promise with hope. As I lay down to sleep, I release the tensions and concerns of the day, knowing that your mercies are new every morning. May your spirit minister to me in my dreams, bringing healing and renewal to my body, mind, and spirit. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for the gift of rest and the assurance that I can find refuge in your loving arms. Grant me the peaceful sleep that only you can provide, and may I wake up with a heart filled with gratitude for your faithfulness. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Heavenly Father, in the busyness of life, my thoughts can be burdened and restless. I acknowledge that you are the ultimate source of peace and restoration, and I invite your healing power into my mind. As I reflect on your word, I am reminded of Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 
through 7. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Lord, I lay before you the anxieties and worries that cloud my mind. I surrender them to you, knowing that you are the one who can replace them with your peace. Grant me the strength to bring every concern to you in prayer, with a heart filled with gratitude for your faithfulness. I pray for your healing power to touch the depths of my mind, bringing clarity, calmness, and a renewed sense of purpose. May your peace stand guard over my thoughts, protecting me from the distractions and pressures that seek to overwhelm me. Thank you for the promise of your peace that surpasses all understanding. I trust that as I focus on you and present my requests with a heart of thanksgiving, your healing power will transform my mind. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Gracious God, in the quiet moments of this night, I come before you with a heart open to your healing presence. As I prepare to rest, I invite your gentle touch to surround me in a blanket of peace. You are the divine comforter, and I trust in your loving care. Heavenly Father, I recognize that my body, mind, and spirit find their true rest in you. Release your healing power upon me as I drift off into sleep, soothing any weariness and tension that may linger. Let your calming presence soothe my soul, bringing tranquility to the depths of my being. Lord, I surrender the events of this day, the concerns of tomorrow, and every burden that weighs on my heart. May your healing touch mend any brokenness, and may your light dispel the shadows of doubt and fear. I place my trust in your unwavering love that knows no bounds. As I enter into the realm of sleep, I pray for dreams infused with your peace and assurance. Guard my mind from any anxious thoughts and grant me a restful sleep that rejuvenates my body and spirit. In the stillness of the night, may your presence be my companion, whispering words of comfort and hope. I thank you, Heavenly Father, for the gift of rest and the promise of your healing presence. May I wake up with a renewed sense of your grace, ready to face a new day with faith and strength. 
In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Heavenly Father, I come before you with a heart burdened by illness and anxiety, seeking your healing touch and the calming assurance that only you can provide. Lord, I trust in your power to bring restoration and peace to every aspect of my being. Lord, I surrender to you the physical ailments that weigh on my body. I ask for your healing hand to touch me, to bring relief and renewal to every part that is affected. I trust in your wisdom to lead and guide the process of my healing, no matter how it unfolds. In the midst of anxiety that clouds my mind and disturbs my soul, I turn to you as my refuge and strength. Cast out the fears that grip my heart, replacing them with the assurance of your presence and love. For you are the Prince of Peace, and I invite your calming spirit to settle over me, dispelling every anxious thought. I choose to trust in you for you have promised in Isaiah chapter 41 verse 10 do not fear for I am with you do not be dismayed for I am your God I will strengthen you and help you I will uphold you with my righteous right hand I hold on to this promise believing that your strength will sustain me through the challenges I face. Grant me the grace to surrender my worries and concerns into your hands, knowing that your plans for me are good. May your peace, which surpasses all understanding, Guard my heart and mind in Christ Jesus. Help me to fix my eyes on you, the author and perfecter of my faith, trusting that your love and mercy will see me through. Thank you, gracious God, for your compassion and faithfulness. I place my health and my anxieties in your hands, confident that you are my healer and my source of peace. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Heavenly Father, in this quiet moment of rest, I surrender the challenges and uncertainties of the day into your loving hands. I cast my anxieties upon you, for you care for me. Fill my heart with the assurance that even in my vulnerability, your love and your strength sustains me. For your mercies are new every morning, and your faithfulness is unwavering to me. Your word assures me in Psalm chapter 18, verse 2, that you are my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer. So Lord, I place my trust in you, recognizing that your strength is made perfect in my weakness. Lord, grant me the wisdom to discern your will in every situation. I also ask for your peace 
that surpasses all understanding, that it may guard my heart and mind, providing a sanctuary of stillness and of your presence as I rest. Lord, I pray for your strength to be a shield around me, defending me from the stresses and pressures of life. In your presence, may I find a refuge where my soul can be restored and my spirit renewed. Let your light shine in the darkness, dispelling any shadows that attempt to threaten my peace. So as I drift off into rest, I declare your promises over my life. May your strength empower me for the journey ahead and your peace guard my heart through the night. In the powerful name of Jesus, I pray, amen. Mighty God, in the stillness of this night, I lay before you the burdens, worries, and anxieties that may have taken residence in my mind. I surrender them to you, knowing that your love is greater than any fear or turmoil. Replace any anxious thoughts that I have with the tranquility that comes from trusting in you. Lord, your word reminds me that you promise peace that surpasses all understanding in Christ Jesus. So I claim this promise over my thoughts and emotions as I prepare to rest. I ask for your healing power to flow through the intricate pathways of my mind. Mend any brokenness, restore any weariness, and bring clarity to my thoughts. Your word declares that you will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are steadfast because they trust in you. So I choose to trust in you, seeking the peace that only you can provide. Lord, I pray for protection against the negative influences that might try to attack my mind. Shield me from the lies of the enemy and fill my thoughts with that which is true, noble, right, pure, lovely, and admirable. Let your word be a lamp to my feet and a light to my path, guiding my thoughts in accordance with your will. As I rest, I trust in your promise to give sleep to those you love. May this time of rest be an opportunity for you to heal and rejuvenate my mind. In the powerful name of Jesus, I pray, amen. Loving God, I come before you with a heart burdened by the challenges that weigh on my mind. In this moment, I lay before you my struggles, anxieties, and my worries. You who knit me together in my mother's womb, understand the intricacies of my thoughts and emotions. Lord, I seek your healing touch on my mental health. I know that you are the God who restores, and I trust in your promises that you are near to the brokenhearted and save the crushed in spirit. Your word assures me that you are a refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. In the shadow of your wings, I find refuge and strength. I pray for clarity of mind, a peace that surpasses understanding, and a renewed sense of purpose. Let your light penetrate the darkness of my thoughts, dispelling any confusion or despair that may linger. Guard my mind, Lord, with the armor of your truth protecting it from the lies and deceptions 
that seek to undermine your peace. I claim the promise found in Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 through 7, trusting that as I present my requests to you with thanksgiving, your peace, which surpasses all understanding, will guard my heart and mind in Christ Jesus. May the peace that flows from your presence be a soothing remedy to the storms within. Lord, I ask for your protection over my thoughts. Shield me from negative influences, self-doubt, and any harmful patterns of thinking. Replace anxious thoughts with the assurance of your love and the truth of your word. Let my mind be a dwelling place for thoughts that are pure, lovely, commendable, and praiseworthy. I surrender control to you, acknowledging that your ways are higher than my ways. Guide me to the resources and support, Lord, that will aid me in this journey. Surround me with understanding and compassionate individuals who know you and who can walk alongside me. As I rest, Lord, I entrust my mind into your care. Let the peace of Christ rule in my heart, and may my thoughts be captive to the obedience of Christ. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Almighty God, in this moment of stillness, as I drift off to sleep, I recognize your sovereignty over all things. You are the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. The one who holds power and all authority is in your hands. As I rest, I seek your strength and peace to permeate every aspect of my life. Lord, your word reminds me in Isaiah chapter 40, verse 29, which says, He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. I am grateful for your promise to renew my strength when I am weary and to empower me when I am weak. In this moment, I lean on your promises trusting in your unwavering faithfulness. Father, I surrender my burdens, my worries, and my fears to you. You are the source of all comfort and peace, and I invite your presence to fill this space where I rest. Wrap me up in your loving arms, and let your peace, which surpasses all understanding, guard my heart and mind in Christ Jesus. Lord, I ask for your strength to sustain me in times of trial. When I feel overwhelmed by life's challenges, remind me that your grace is always sufficient and your power is made perfect in my weakness. Help me to trust in your unfailing love, knowing that you are my rock my fortress, and my deliverer. Father, I pray for your guidance and direction in every area of my life. Order my steps according to your will and lead me on paths of righteousness for your name's sake. May your spirit be my constant companion, guiding me with wisdom and discernment. As I rest in your presence, Lord, I am reminded of your promise in John chapter 14, verse 27, which says, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not be afraid. May your peace flood my soul like a river washing away 
all anxiety and fear. Thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness and provision. May your strength sustain me and your peace reign in my heart, both now and forevermore. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray, amen. Heavenly Father, I come before you with a heart full of gratitude and a soul thirsty for more of your presence. I humbly ask that you increase my faith, Lord, strengthen the foundation of my belief that I may trust you more deeply in every aspect of my life. Your word teaches us in Romans chapter 10, verse 17. So faith comes from hearing, and hearing through the word of Christ. So open my mind and my heart, Lord, to hear your voice through the scriptures. May your word be a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path, guiding me with unwavering certainty. Lord, in times of doubt and uncertainty, help me recall Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Grant me the assurance that comes from a steadfast faith rooted in the hope of your promises. Let my conviction be unshakable even in the face of challenges. I pray for a faith like that of Abraham who believed in the Lord and he counted it to him as righteousness. May my faith be a testament to your righteousness. Teach me to trust you even when circumstances seem impossible, knowing that with you all things are possible. As I seek a deeper connection with you, let me draw near with a sincere heart in full assurance of faith. Remove any barriers that hinder my communication with you, Lord. Create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. Lord, I long for your presence in my life. Fill me with your Holy Spirit that I may experience the joy and peace that surpasses all understanding. May your presence be a constant companion, guiding me, comforting me, and empowering me to live a life that glorifies you. I surrender my doubts, fears, and uncertainties to you, Lord. Replace them with a steadfast faith. Help me to fix my eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of my faith. In moments of weakness, let me find strength in you, knowing that you are the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. I offer this prayer in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Gracious Heavenly Father, I come before you in awe of your majesty and in need of a greater measure of faith. Your word teaches us in Matthew chapter 17 verse 20 that even with faith as small as a mustard seed we can move mountains. Lord, I pray 
that you would cultivate within me a mustard seed of faith that grows into a mighty tree firmly rooted in your love and grace. Help me to trust in your plan, even when I cannot comprehend it. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 through 6 remind me to trust in you with all my heart and not lean on my own understanding. Lord, grant me the wisdom to surrender my doubts and my fears to you, relying on your infinite wisdom and love. Your word also assures us in Isaiah chapter 41, verse 10, Fear not, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Lord, help me to release my fears into your hands, trusting in your unwavering presence and the strength that comes from knowing you are with me. Lord, I trust in your perfect timing and your infinite goodness. I desire a faith that transforms my life and the lives of those around me. May my life be a reflection of your love, grace, and mercy, shining a light that draws others closer to you. I surrender my heart, my dreams, and my fears to you, O Lord. Increase my faith and draw me closer to you each day. In the name of Jesus Christ, the author and perfecter of my faith, I pray. Amen. Heavenly Father, I come before you with a heart burdened by the challenges and struggles of my mind. You, Lord, are the great physician, the one who heals both body and soul. I humbly seek your healing touch over my mind, knowing that you are the source of all comfort and restoration. In Psalm chapter 34, verse 18, your word reassures us that you are near to the brokenhearted and save the crushed in spirit. Lord, my mind feels burdened, and I ask for your nearness and your saving grace to envelop my thoughts. Heal the brokenness within me and grant me the peace that surpasses all understanding. I surrender my anxieties, my fears, and the heaviness of my mind into your hands, trusting that you will strengthen me and uphold me with your righteous right hand. Lord Jesus, you are the Prince of Peace, and I ask for the peace that only you can provide to guard my mind and calm the storm within me. Lord, dispel the anxious thoughts and replace them with the serenity that comes from resting in your presence. I pray against any stronghold of negativity, doubt, or despair that may have taken root in my mind. In 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5, your word instructs us to take every thought captive 
to obey Christ. Help me, Lord, to align my thoughts with your truth and to reject any destructive patterns that hinder my well-being. Father, I also lift up any wounds or traumas that may be affecting my mind. You are the God who heals the broken heart and binds up their wounds. Pour out your healing balm over the scars of my mind, bringing restoration and wholeness. I claim the promise of Isaiah chapter 26, verse 3, which says, You keep them in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on you, because they trust in you. May my mind be anchored in you, Lord, trusting in your faithfulness and relying on your peace to guard my thoughts. I pray for wisdom and discernment that I may make choices that align with your will and contribute to the well-being of my mind. Guide me, O Lord, in the path of righteousness for your name's sake. I offer this prayer in the mighty name of Jesus, my Savior and Healer. Amen. Heavenly Father, as I prepare to rest, I come before you with a heart full with gratitude for the gift of another day and a spirit that seeks your divine protection. You are my refuge and fortress, the one in whom I find safety and peace. I humbly ask, O Lord, that you surround me with your loving and powerful protection as I lay down to rest. Lord, I choose to dwell in your presence, seeking the shelter and refuge that only you can provide. May your shadow cover me and may I rest securely under the shadow of your wings. Guard my mind and heart, O Lord, as I sleep. Protect me from anxious thoughts, worries, and fears that may try to disturb my peace. Your word promises in Philippians chapter 4, verse 7, that your peace, which surpasses all understanding, will guard my heart and mind in Christ Jesus. I receive that peace and entrust my thoughts to your care. I pray the words of Psalm chapter 4, verse 8, over my sleep. In peace, I will both lie down and sleep. For you alone, O Lord, make me dwell in safety. Grant me peaceful and restful sleep, knowing that you are watching over me. Lord, I acknowledge that you neither slumber nor sleep. Thank you for your constant vigilance. I place my trust in you, the one who never fails and is always faithful. Lord, I commit myself into your care, and I declare that my trust is in you alone. Thank you for being my shield, my fortress, and my ever 
present help in times of need. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. Heavenly Father, as I prepare to rest, I invite the presence of your Holy Spirit to fill the space around me. Your Spirit is the Comforter, the one who brings peace and assurance. I long for the warmth of your Spirit to envelop my surroundings bringing a sense of your nearness and love. In Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18, your word instructs us to be filled with the Holy Spirit. I open my heart to you, Lord, and I ask that your spirit would fill every corner of my room. May the atmosphere be saturated with your divine presence, dispelling any darkness and ushering in the light of your love. As I lay down to rest, I surrender any anxieties and concerns into your hands. I pray for the fruits of the Spirit, as mentioned in Galatians to manifest in my life. May love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control be evident in my life. I thank you, Heavenly Father, for the precious gift of your Holy Spirit. May my resting place be a sanctuary filled with the presence of your Holy Spirit. In the powerful name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Heavenly Father, as I prepare to rest in the stillness of this night, I come before you with a heart filled with gratitude for the gift of life and the health that sustains me. You are the ultimate source of life and healing, and I seek your blessings over my physical, emotional, and spiritual well-being. Lord, I thank you for making me fearfully and wonderfully made by your hands. I acknowledge that every breath I take is a gift from you, and I ask for your continued grace to bless and sustain my health. May your divine touch course through every cell, organ, and system within me, bringing vitality and strength. I bring before you any areas of my health that need your healing touch. You are the God who heals all our diseases, and I trust in your promise that by your wounds we are healed. I surrender, Lord, to your will, knowing that your plans for me are good and that your mercies are new every morning. Lord Jesus, I invite you into the spaces of my life that need restoration and healing. Whether physical ailments, emotional scars, or spiritual wounds, I place them all at the foot of your cross. Let your redeeming love flow through me, bringing wholeness and renewal to every aspect of my being. Grant me wisdom, O Lord, to steward my body well. Remind me, Lord, that my body is your temple, a place for you to dwell and delight. So may my choices reflect the gratitude I have for the temple you have given me. As I close my eyes, I pray for your peace to settle over me. 
release any tension, anxiety, or stress that may hinder my well-being. Let the sweet assurance of your presence be a healing remedy, soothing any discomfort or pain. I also lift up those around me who may be in need of physical, emotional, or spiritual healing. May your compassionate touch reach them, bringing comfort and restoration, just as your compassionate touch reaches me, Lord. Mighty God, I surrender my health into your hands, trusting that your plans are higher than my own. May your will be done in my life, and may I be a vessel of your love and healing to those around me. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Gracious Father, in the stillness of this night, I come before you, acknowledging the magnitude of your healing power and the depth of your boundless love. As I lay down, I recognize my need for your healing touch and the yearning in my heart for increased faith. Lord, you are the great physician, the one who mends broken hearts and restores wounded spirits. Lord, I open my heart to your transformative grace. I surrender to your divine wisdom, trusting that your healing power surpasses all understanding. You are the God who brings comfort to the afflicted, and I find rest in the knowledge that your love is a remedy that can soothe every ache and pain. I bring before you all areas of my life that need your restoration, whether physical, emotional, or spiritual, I place these concerns in your capable hands. Touch me, Lord, with your healing grace, and let your divine light penetrate every corner of my being. As I close my eyes and drift off into sleep, I pray for increased faith. Grant me the strength to believe in your promises, even in the midst of uncertainty. May my faith be an anchor that holds firm, unswayed by the storms of life. Illuminate the path of my journey with the radiant light of your truth, guiding me toward a deeper understanding of your infinite love. I place my trust in you, Lord, acknowledging that your ways are higher than my ways, and your thoughts are higher than my thoughts. Let your spirit work within me, aligning my heart with your divine purpose. As I rest, let your peace, which surpasses all understanding, guard my heart and mind in Christ Jesus. Remind me, Lord, that all things work for the good of those who love you and are called according to your purpose. I pray all of this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Heavenly Father, as I lay down to rest, I thank you for the countless blessings you have bestowed upon me for the moments of joy and the challenges that have strengthened my faith. Lord, I surrender my thoughts, my anxieties, and my uncertainties to you. In this quiet moment, I seek your presence to envelop me like a warm and comforting blanket. I trust in your promises, for your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. 
As I close my eyes, I pray for increased faith in my life. Strengthen the foundation of my belief, O Lord, that it may withstand the storms of doubt and uncertainty. May my faith grow like a mustard seed, steadily and resiliently, until it blossoms into a tree rooted deeply in your love and grace. Lord, speak to me in my dreams. Let your whispers of wisdom and guidance permeate my subconscious. Grant me the clarity to discern your will and the courage to follow it. In the stillness of the night, may your spirit speak to my soul, reinforcing the truth that I am fearfully and wonderfully made in your image. I cast all my cares upon you, for you care for me. Grant me a restful sleep, free from the burdens that often weigh on my heart. As I close my eyes, I choose to focus on your goodness, your mercy, and your unchanging love. Let the sweet assurance of your presence be a lullaby to my soul, calming every restless thought. Lord, I surrender my plans and desires to you. May your will be done in my life. If there are any areas where my faith is weak, I pray for the strength to trust you more deeply. Help me to walk by faith and not by sight, knowing that you are with me every step of the way. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Heavenly Father, in the quietness of this moment, I come before you, acknowledging the troubles that weigh on my mind. And in this moment, I invite you into my thoughts and emotions. Lord, I surrender to you the challenges, anxieties, and uncertainties that cloud my mind. Your word declares that you are near to the brokenhearted and save the crushed in spirit. I seek your healing presence to light up the darkness in my mind, bringing clarity, peace, and restoration. I recognize that you are the God who can transform minds and renew thoughts. I pray for a renewal of my mind, that the patterns of fear and worry may be replaced by thoughts that align with your wisdom, your love, and your truth. Remove any strongholds of negativity, doubt, and fear, replacing them with the assurance of your presence and the promises of your word. As I rest, may your peace be a soothing remedy, quieting the storms within my mind. Grant me restful sleep, free from thoughts of worry and turmoil that often accompany the night. May I wake up with a mind that is renewed and ready to face the challenges of a new day. I pray all of this in the name of Jesus. Amen.
On this channel, our number one focus is helping believers deepen their time with God. From prayers and affirmations to help clear anxiety for a deep sleep, or short daily prayers to encourage you. If you want to grow closer to God, subscribe to tap into these resources every day. Peace and blessings, and thank you for being here.